Hello. Hello. Everybody, happy Monday, the start of another week. You join us here. It's yeah, right. It's pretty windy. Yeah, but it's not as windy, well, tonight as we're doing the thing, you know. Hope you're all keeping well. Did you have a grand old Hello weekend? There. Hello there. Just a head in your man, look. How are you all keeping? Great to see you. Um, tonight's flight, we start part four of the Gallic War series. And tonight we focus on the Suebi and Ariovistus. The Germanic threat through the Jura Mountains. Right, where would you get it? We're going to follow the route of Caesar. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> There's things happening. There'll be sounds are back. We're going to follow on Caesar as he kind of, you know, made his way towards Ariovistus and the Suebi tribe, a Germanic tribe. Yeah, baby. We're going to, yeah. <laughs> I missed that sound. Uh, we're going to be traversing the Jura Mountains. They're kind of on the Western Alps, right? small little mountain range uh, on the borderlands of France, Switzerland and of course Germany highlighting the rugged terrain where Caesar expanded Rome's influence alright our route is going to take us from Aton or Aton uh, Lima Foxtrot Quebec Foxtrot in France over to Dijon over to Lima Foxtrot Sierra Delta then a couple of stops along the way uh, Lima Foxtrot Quebec Mike out in Basel Lima Foxtrot Sierra Bravo and then finally back to Geneva Lima Sierra Golf Golf. So we have a couple of stops along the route tonight. The aircraft of choice, it is this. The FlySimware Cessna 414 AW Chancellor. A light twin aircraft, gorgeous and uh, very capable of what we require of this steed tonight, right? Total mileage, about 245 nautical miles, right? Now you might be saying, Murph, where's our flight plan? Yeah, hang on. <laughs> I forgot to do the thing. I have one here, look. Right, here it is. I better export this puppy here now. Hang on. Oh, we'll call it Gallic Wars Part 4. Horse it in there now, fairly lively. And then I'll go into my Discord and make sure it's all there for you. Because, you know, flight plans. I'm a devil. Uh, <clears throat> I know. I know. Jesus, you wouldn't know what I'd have in my folders, lads. Eh? You wouldn't know what the fella be working on next. Gallic Wars, get in there now, you big devil, you. Right, grand. Over to Discord, you get the flight plan, but it looks a little bit something like this. Yes, yes. Taking off from here. Yeah, baby. Jesus. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you start pressing buttons. Genuinely scared the crap out That was terrifying. It's very loud in my head. Um, oh, Jesus. I'm after pinching my own ear. Who pinches someone's ear? Anyway, um, from here to there, over to that place, up to this place. Look at that, lads. That there is the River Ryan. They have accents, yeah. That sounds like this, yeah. Over this side of the water. Right? And over on this side, not so much. Uh, and then we're coming back down to Geneva, down to where the Swiss are. Uh, so it's a nice bit of a jog, this one. And as I said, it's called, it, it is following uh, Caesar's movements from... We left him after he defeated the Helvetii. And, uh, well, there's a whole story. There's lots to learn about. I have some new emotes in the chat as well. For those of you who can avail of our emoticons. Uh, one of them is called Rome. Two-tone Rome. <laughs> Brilliant. And then the other one, I can't remember. I think it's for mods only. Um, biggest. <laughs> just biggest. Nothing else. Just biggest. Um, so, yeah, play with those emotes. They're loads of fun. You'll have lots of hours of entertainment. Um, so that's our flight plan. Put that over there now. Now, where was I? It was over here, look. And did you see the state of the wind, by the way? Jefferson says something earlier on. Wasn't there not a fly from Manchester to Dublin? They tried to go back to Manchester, couldn't do it there, and they ended up in friggin' Beauvais in Paris. Something like that, right? So, hang on. We'll go in and say he hello. Hello. We'll go in and say hello to everyone in the chat, and then I'll catch up. How's that, right? So, who's here, lads? Who came in the door? Jefferson 2001, the man, myth, and legend has graced us with his presence. You're very welcome in. Am I off to one side or something? Yeah, I was. Uh, it's from me landings yesterday. They were sideways. But anyway, Jefferson, good to see you. Rambach Mort is here. Hello. My dude, Toto is in the house along with Lee Dixon. Fierce Wolf looking fierce. Gand Wolfie. Welcome in, man. Super Typhon rambles in. All aboard Aero Rome. Nice, nice. Vacuum is in the chat. Robert J56 is here. Canoe Head. Just another manic Monday. I love that song. The Bangles. Jez, great bunch of girls. Oh, brilliant, do you know? 
Um, six o'clock already. I was just in the middle of a dream. She was kissing Valentina. It's not important, the lyrics, but they're good. Do you know? Anyway, Sean Dale, good to see you. Night Zep. He says, hello, hello, from the heartland of the Suebi. Nowadays called Schwaben. This is good, yeah? Uh, very nice. Well, it's you, Tani. Good to see you. Tanish Mossman is in the house. Captain Meowingtons is here. Filthy has rambled aboard. Sun Jammer is in the house with Belbro. You're all very welcome in. How are you, lads? Sure, pull up a seat and grab a pint. It's only marvellous. Eagle Castellet is here. You're very welcome aboard. SK Sun is in the house. Uh, Ascari Wolf. Happy Monday. Soaring AJ. AJ H, man. Hope all is well. Viper Strike is in the chat. He says, good afternoon, Murph and Fireflies. I flew the Cessna 172 over Cuba yesterday. Very nice. Cuba is a beautiful location in the world. I haven't been, but I hear it's quite lovely. But I, it, it, what's it like in the sim? I can't remember the last time you flew in Cuba. But uh, yeah, nice going, Viper. Black Eyes Gabe, we have a Black Eyes Gabe. Gabe, it's good to see you. Just glad to be here. Gabe had a wonderful flight. <laughs> we could hear him. Jesus. We heard in the wind, you know, as his plane touched down. Uh, great to see you here, man. Hope all is well. Hemming Bird has rambled in. She says, I went to B&Q earlier. The shop bloke asked me if I wanted decking, but luckily I got the first punch in. <laughs> what else did they used to call them? A decking. Do you want a deck? Hit me slap. I'll burst you. Uh, what was the other one? A straightener. Did you ever hear that? Us dubs would know it. Do you want a straightener? Oh, yeah, I hit my straightener. Basically, it was to straighten you up. Do you know? I'll take the bend out of you. A straightener. Did you ever hear that one? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Hemingbird, good to see you. Uh, right, where are we at? Where are we at? The one... Oh, that one blew me away. <laughs> Onboard simulations, good to see you. Jepson says, Some wild diversions yesterday caused with the high winds. Run Ryanair flight, Manchester to Dublin. Had to divert to Bavay after holding... Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Nuts. Imagine that, right? You know, ah, yes, we're going to Dublin. No, it's diverted. We'll see it in Paris. It's total sense. Uh, but yes, Boston Elf, good to see you. Energizer is in the chat. You're very welcome aboard. Zythe, welcome in. Shuffle Shoes, shuffles in. AJH, John. Jan Race is here. Good to see you, my dude. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, Trits4, happy Monday. Wombat49, <laughs> let the garlic wars begin. Yes, yes, yes. We're, it's the garlic wars, Murph. The garlic wars. Indeed, indeed. Uh, right. Lightworks Laser Engraving watching us here on YouTube. You're very welcome aboard, man. How are things? Uh, Strap21, hola. Uh, let me see. G-O-D on YouTube. Welcome in, welcome in. Guys, thank you very much indeed for tuning in. Badgers is here. Hello, Badgers. He says, hey, Murph and chat. Hello. Uh, Naughty Gnome has resubscribed, as has Mewa's fan. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much indeed for your continued support. I sure we might as well. Do you know, the night is young. Ah. Oh, Jesus. A zesty beverage on a Monday night. Um, but yes, Naughty Gnome, it's great to see you. Muse, how are you, man? Muse, were you flying today? Wayland, oh, wait, it was cancelled. Uh, Wayland says, let's fast forward. Yes, we're getting there soon. Uh, Muse fan bursts in the door, of course, saying, How he is, yes, mad jokes, yes. It's Latin, it's Latin. Old veteran 965, he says, Good afternoon, all. Um, lose the German tribes on Microsoft. They need pillaging badly. To be grand, great bunch of lads, the Germans. I've always said it. Uh, right, where are we at now? We're up here, look. Mutley, good to see you. Resubscribing to the channel. Thank you very, very much indeed. Cheers, man. That made me jump. It made you jump. It made me jump. Lads, thank you very much indeed. All the look at the Roman emotes. Brilliant. Um, shall I throw him to the floor, sir? What? Say that again, St. Jorian. Shall I throw him to the floor, sir? Yes, yes. Throw him to the floor. <laughs> Brilliant. Did you ever watch The Life of Brian? If you haven't, what's wrong with you? You need to do things like that. It's important. Educational, you know. That was banned in Ireland for years. It only released it last month. That's a blatant lie. But do you know what I mean? It was banned for years. You can't have that sacrilege. Sacrilege. You can't. You can't show them that. They were freaking miles ahead of us for Monty Python. Do you know? A flight from Manchester to Dublin, London, Liverpool via Dublin, Belfast and Carlisle. Was I flying? Get a load of this guy. Yeah, right. Uh, Goblin Zeus, good evening. QC Frank, welcome in. Um, ain't no one going to talk about Caesar's brother. Caesar Salad. Yeah, it was, well, twice removed, do you know? Uh, now, let me see. RF, good to see you. Your first group flight. Congratulations and welcome in. It shall be fun. Don't worry about anything, 
right? I'm horrendous at this, so it'll be fine, right? Don't do what I do, you would be laughing. WM Flight Sim, good to see you, you're welcome in. Keith O'Farrell is here. He says, hi, Murph and Mrs. Two-Tone, and all hopes well. You too, my dude, you too, my dude. Buttons, Murph. Yes. Bit of background tune is here. So, Husker 2, good to see you. Kazaki Can Flyer. I get the refund? No, shag off, there's no refunds. Uh, Kazaki Flyer, welcome in. Uh, Robinson Racing, howdy, man. Uh, now let me see, Ryan White, hola. The Real Flying Bunny says, hey, you're very welcome in, dude. Good to see you. Now, uh, I'm up here, look. whack a mo Happy Monday. Zybok Doc calling from Denmark. Hello from Tipperary, Zybok. I hope you're well. Now, let me see. Boston Elf, you're welcome in Hello again. There. Hello there. Right, I'm catching up with the chat. I'm doing a great job. So much violence on a Monday. I hate to think what Fridays would be like. Violence, you say? Scorpio49 rambles in. As he's sitting by the fire, he says, Good evening, Murph and all in chat. You're okay tonight, as we're past the watershed. There's another storm coming. I feel like Stephen King and the crow. Or was it the storm? There's a storm coming. What's this one they're calling it? Jocelyn. They should have called it Jolene. At least we can have a song about it. Do you know what I mean? They should name every storm after the song. So you can sing about it. Isha. Huh? No, that's no use at all. Jocelyn. No, we need Jolene. Right? Do you know what I mean? And, and you know, words to that effect. Uh, but yes. Uh, in keeping with the Roman theme, there will be Italian food for dinner tonight, says old veteran. Well, that sounds wonderful. What are you going to have? You know, some Roman delicacies included Dormouse. I'm just saying, you don't knock it till you try it. They had a life expectancy of about 40. Uh, Vince C, good to see you. Squawk Torque is here. Tried the model matching mod again today. No luck. I haven't had any model matching whatsoever for months. Really? No way, man. Zybok, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it, man. We'll try and fix it, though. Energizer, I would say I'm very cultured by having watched Monty Python, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, but then I realised I haven't watched Star Trek or Doctor Who. Listen, don't worry about Doc Doctor Who. <laughs> Star Trek, most important, right? A five-year mission to seek out strange new worlds, new civilizations. To boldly go where no one had gone before. And then Picard took over. You know what I mean? Patrick Stewart, right? He made Baldies look sexy again. And Patrick, right? Do you know? Not that they ever lost that appeal. I'm just saying, you know. Uh, it's because I'm getting close to it myself. It's it's fading fast. Romani and Thomas. <laughs> now, right out a hundred times. <laughs> Roman generals make the best time travellers because they can move centuries forward. Ah, heaven bird. Ah, brilliant. Who, who redeemed Picard? That was good, Sean. That was a, someone write, somebody said write that down. That was a great joke. Mr. Z is here. Good to see you, man. How was the history lessons? Brilliant. We're learning nothing. Uh, now, we're, we're over here. Uh, Ali Dobson, good to see you. You're very welcome in. Uh, there's a song about Josephine. Josephine? No, Jocelyn or Jocelyn. I don't know what she's called. I had pizza with mozzarella. Jesus, that sounds very nice. Uh, Elaine will have lasagna, and I think I'll have the veal le scala. Oh, jeez. Veal, old veteran. And tell me, what sort of beverages shall you use on the... Do you know? That sounds very nice, doesn't it? Knight Zeb likes himself a well-aged dormouse steak. <laughs> Brilliant. Tarnish is in the phenom. you would be grand. Totally fine. You can do two laps. Star Trek is worth watching. It just is, Keith. Shake and Stevens, Josephine. Do you remember Shaken Stevens? He had one eye looking at you. He had one looking for you. Do you remember him? Brilliant. He had the nicest jumper collection you've ever seen. Cardigans, knitted, you know, wool. Brilliant. Uh, the 80s, man. Uh, right, now, where we're at? over here, look. Julie Shaken Stevens. Julie must be a wife of Julie. <laughs> right, right. I think we'll all agree to disagree that uh, Jocelyn, or Jocelyn, or is it Joycelyn? I don't know who names them. Seemingly, the Irish and the English had a conversation and said, we're going to name all the stores, the storms, right? And then in 2019, the Dutch, isn't that weird? They came over and they said, we'll take part in this. And they did. So now you have the Irish, the English and the Dutch naming all the storms. When I was young, it was just windy. I don't know what's after happening, but sure, listen. Downrange says, Murph, I can't take it anymore. I'm going to mute you. <laughs> Brilliant. You want to see me at breakfast time? Do I want to have breakfast with you or what? No, I'm not like that in the morning. Although some mornings I am. I tend to be a bit kind of strained in the morning. The brain hasn't fully uh, captured the day. I'm still in the scanning for devices phase. You know, 
Uh, the storms have different names over here. Oh, do they? Apparently the next storm would be named... Re oh, 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 oh. Close, Viper, close. Jesus, I nearly got that one, lads. Huh? I nearly got that one. Right, so before we go, and we're going to do a full startup on this machine here now in a second, I need to tell you what we're doing, right? So, a quick recap. Cast your thoughts and eyes back to the year 58 BC. Well, you don't have to go back that far. Just think of last week, right? Part three was last week. The Battle of... Uh, the Black Day. <laughs> See, I still can't pronounce it. The decisive victory overcoming the Helvetii. So, in our previous episode, we embarked on a journey to the heart of Gaul, where Caesar faced and defeated the Helvetii in a pivotal battle. Our flight replicating this historic march took us through the scenic landscapes of eastern France from Bern all the way down to Autumn. We flew the agile Airbus H160 helicopter and... Uh, Experience brought us closer to understanding the strategic genius that was of Caesar. Part 4 tonight focuses on the Germanic threat, the Jura Mountain skirmishes, and of course, Ariovistus. Right? So, we have some context. The aircraft we're flying tonight, of course, the 414, cruising speed of about yeah, 200 knots, range about 1500-ish yeah, miles, uh, service ceiling some 30,000 30, feet, and a passenger capacity up to about eight peoples. Uh, the route in which we've discussed. So I'll bring you into this whole story, right? So Caesar was there decking the Helvetii. See what it did there, Hemingbird? I mean, shut your eyes and you're there, right? But anyway, Caesar last week... Well, it wasn't last week, it was 2,000 years ago. But anyway, he was there having an old scrap with the Helvetii, this massive tribe of some 300,000 um, leaving Switzerland, modern-day Switzerland. They were based somewhere around Lake Geneva, and they were migrating. They were sick and tired of these Germanic tribes, the Suebi, constantly harassing them, and they needed more space to live. Expansion. So they said, right, we're going to pack up our troubles and head that way, out to the maritime regions of Gaul. In doing so, well, they were going to travel through Romans' turf, Romans' front door, as it were. And the Romans didn't like that. Oi, what are you doing? So, a broke fought out. I mean, a fight broke out and Caesar went up there and it was all sorts of be Jesus. At the time, during Caesar's fight with the Helvetii, there were other Gallic, uh, Gallic tribes jostling for position, as they do, the, the tribes, the whole region of Gaul, modern-day France, and some of the lowlands and that neck of the woods. Well, you had all of these rivaling tribes. Hello there. And they were constantly fighting with and against each other for, you know, I like that mountain, it'll be mine. So during all of this, one tribe, one tribe said, I know exactly what to do here. I shall call on the support of my cousins across the river. The big beardy fella, Ariovistus. Say, Ario, would you mind coming over to give us a hand? Uh, so Ariovistus and the Suebi were invited in. Uh-oh. Uh, and that's what happened. They invited the assistance of the Germanic cousin, Ariovistus, a great German leader. He was only looking for an excuse to bring his 100,000 plus army into Gaul. He was like Caesar, expansionist. He, yes, we're going to Gaul. It's great over there. The Gallic tribe who invited him, well, they thought Ariovistus had come over give them a helping hand, and then, you know, head back across the Rhine. Thanks very much. You're sound. That wasn't the case. Ariovistus, well, he fancied this new region. He thought, hang on a second, this is brilliant. The whole land shall come under my control. That scared the actual bejesus out of the rest of the Gallic tribes. Oh, I don't believe it. You just went and invited the Germanic tribes in. What were you thinking? So they said, oh, bother. There was no way the Gauls could all work together against the Germans. So they said, uh, what about this Caesar individual? You know, your man who's after helping us somewhat out by stopping the, the Helvetii. He, he stopped that problem. I wonder, could he help us? And that's what they did. Runners, messages, everything started coming down to Caesar to say, we need your help. There's, an, there's a massive German tribe on the way over the Rhine and they keep coming. Oh, bother. Caesar, not in any rush to take on a massive Germanic army, he requested that they return back across the Rhine, or at the very least, stop more Germans from coming over the Rhine. He sent messages to Ariovistus, but he would have none of it. 
Caesar then sent a letter detailing the rules of the Germans, or to the Germans, that no one else could enter this region. There was to be no fighting, no pillaging, and any Gallic hostage must be returned. Ariovistus scoffed at it. He broke his left foot laughing. How funny, he thought, of a Roman to make such a demand so far from Rome. And he said, if Caesar wanted to force the issue, well, he was more than welcome to try. Oh, it's on! It's on now, lads! Ariovistus, he was a friend of the Roman Republic. In actual fact, the hilarity, some years before, with the assistance of Julius Caesar, Ariovistus was named a friend of Rome. Caesar was in a bit of a pickle. Uh, do you know that fella who I said was grand? Yeah, he's not. We need to fight him. Huh? Yeah, he's no good at all. He's up to... But didn't you say... No, no. He's, he's an issue. We need to deal with him. And, uh, but that was the predicament. But Caesar knew, in fact, they all knew, you can't have these massive German tribes running amok. The entire region is going to be destabilized, and we have a massive Roman army under Caesar, kind of out there in no man's land. Something had to be done. So, Caesar, thinking he was okay and, you know, fairly solidified, I'll go up and meet him face to face. He knew he had to put a stop to it. Plus all the other tribes, they all now knew, uh, we don't want the Germans here at all. So they were able to help Caesar out in his travels and resupply and all this sort of jazz, right? So, off he went. Caesar headed north to pursue him. We're going to stop it there. Because we're going to get our aircraft up and running, then we're going to learn what happens next. Now, on tonight's flight as well, we're going to learn a couple of things. How did the Romans navigate? We have all sorts of cool instruments and radio signals that we can go flying, including GPS. Well, back then, the Romans uh, they didn't, right? Then I want to focus on some of the religious beliefs back then, because some of them are fantastic. We've, we've heard about the sacred chickens, and if you've never heard of the sacred chickens, I'll bring you back up to speed in a little while. But we're going to focus on the belief system of not only the Romans, but also the Suebi, because these were kind of the, the written laws of the day. They had to follow them in fear that their gods were going to punish them and all the sorts of jazz, Do you know? So we're going to do all that now in a little while, all right? So let me see, if I just highlight this so I know not to forget it, because I forgot a heap of stuff last week. Oh, sure, lads, it can happen to anyone. It could happen to anyone. So here we go now. We're going to hop into our little airplane, get the thing up and running. And uh, this is a really, really nice airplane. Huge, huge fan of this aircraft. Uh, so the Romans, all the Romans had was via war, right? Do you know? No, it's not good to see you. Um... Jostling for position. Oh, that's a good one, actually. Yes, yes. Preston, you're very welcome aboard. Thank you for the follow. Um, if you name a storm Jolene, it has to be one that'll take the house, just like the song. <laughs> right? Shake and Stevens had what you would call mortgage eyes. One fixed, one variable. <laughs> uh, it can happen to anyone, but he was brilliant. It, it made his ensemble look, you know, the way it did. Uh, right, now, let me see. We're up here somewhere. Um... Julius is going to get the... He's going to get a right... Oh, no. Julius is going to get a right deck in now. He is, isn't he? The stars always shine uh, the way northwards. Right? Uh, now, hey, Mariner Halley is here. Good to see you. If you pick up a rock in France, does that make it a gallstone? Ah, Rad Baron. That's brilliant. Ah, Jesus. Do you know, I once had a gallstone. I'd many... I'd get me gallbladder taken out. To get me gallbladder... What? Me? Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, now, right, I think it's time for a drink. Vacuum, couldn't agree more. Lenny Brooks, I haven't broken a thing yet, right? I'm only here for the History Channel. <laughs> now you want to fly. Sorry, Sean, sorry. Um, what do you mean, have I broken anything yet? I don't break anything. Breaker of things. Mew seems to be having problem with the Twitch. Yeah, the baby. Jesus. Yeah. Mew seems to be having problems with buffering on Twitch. Is that still a problem? Is that still a problem? Is Twitch still kind of buffering every now and again? Uh, if you're experiencing some sort of issue with Twitch, hop on over to YouTube. We're at stunning 4K quality. Now, 4K is coming to Twitch, but for the moment, you know, if it's not working, jump on over to YouTube. And um, Paparazzi, thank you very, very much indeed. 30 months, my dude. Very, very kind of you. Great to see you. And, uh, well, thank you for all your support. Uh, not Twitch in Canada. Doing just fine. Good to hear it, Newhead. Right, so here we are in the Cessna 414. Have you flown this before? This is from Fly Simware. These are the guys who are working on the brand new Learjet 35. 
And I have to say, this is a pretty aeroplane, right? Um, and it's highly, highly capable. And it's one of those aircraft that's just been updated a ton. Fly somewhere, like, like weekly, they were updating this thing. Do you know what I mean? But yes, uh, it only seems to be you. Music, wasn't your internet a bit on the dodge so or dodge side? The Airbus pilot at Dublin yesterday had blue eyes. One blew his way, one blew that way. <laughs> blue eyes. Right, uh, so this is our machine. So let's hop inside and get ourselves acquainted with it. Do you like my curtains? I've just got them steamed. So here we are in the cabin, but uh, we'll jump into the cockpit here and go to our little tablet and we're going to get ourselves set up. So we're going to close the internal doors. Bit of noise there, thank you very much. We're going to remove the chocks, engine plugs, tie down, static wicks and the pedo covers. And we'll get rid of the yoke and rudder locks. Perfect. So on this page, this is just for your equipment, the doors, the aircraft state, maintenance and so on. Now maintenance, well there is no maintenance, they're just there. Anyway, next page. Uh, wind, that's okay, we can see what the relevant wind is doing, or relative wind is doing. Loading, we can load up this thing. So if we want Alicia, for example, a 31 year old weighing 150 five pounds well if we press this but i'd be she's on the phone tell me alicia is it an iphone or is it a thingy phone who knows but you can do that you can do that right uh, moving on uh, abruptly that's our loading so let's look at our fuel so we've got 50 50 in the tanks range of about eh, we're gonna up the uh up the old fuelage here right let's go 70 70 that's good and that's good so we can see fuel on board range just under 800 miles lots and lots and lots and then we have a walk around and then we have our checklist everything's fairly good uh to be here right uh it does look marvelous uh let me see now big carlo good to see you uh i'm watching on youtube and typing here in the chat i can watch other streams fine uh and your stream on youtube is fine too internet is perfect jesus muse i wonder is like i wonder are there any settings you need to clear or muse i wonder is it happening just on the mod screen. Do you know the way on Twitch you have the mods view? Just, we'll try and pinpoint the issue. Do you know what I mean? Right, so I'm finished with the tablet. We can follow this off. So we have your pre-flight checks before starting the engines. We can go in here. Everything's just, yep. And yep, 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 yep. So we'll disappear this for the moment because I'm happy enough with it. So uh, disappear, please. And well, welcome to this machine here, right? Welcome to this machine. Right, I need to disable that. One second now. Controls. I was making videos at the weekend and I had to, uh, I had to get rid of stuff. You're on the throttle on the HOTAS mixture. I want to clear you, validate you, save you and go back. We're going to manually use this. All right. So let me see, looking down here, fuel tanks are currently in the off position. We're going to turn the right to main and left to main. Go. Uh, looking up on the overhead, lights are off, some visors don't need just yet. Remove the yokes just so we can see what's happening. So we have our gear handle in the down position. Park and brake is set to on. Verify is checked. Yes, it is. And let me see. Prop is full. Mixture is off. Throttle has movement. And we're looking fairly okay. Uh, cowl flaps. Pull to close. And push to open. It's okay. Leave them open for our start up. Go ahead and get a little window open. Could you have shot a WD-40, couldn't it? Right, okay, so we're going to come down here to our left-hand side. And this is where everything lives in terms of our electrical systems. So we have these bars here, right? We're going to turn on the master battery. Sounds are good. Excellent. So master battery, go ahead and get the alternators turned on. And we'll get some lights on here as well. Anti-collision and nav lights can be turned on. Everything else leave off at the moment. All our circuit breakers work. So a quick visual check on them, make sure there's nothing popped up. We look okay. Quick check over the far side. They look okay. Excellente. Right, okay, it's quite dim in here, so we'll turn on some panel lighting. Very nice, very nice. Uh, and we're going to have a look at our fuel controls. So let's see. So we can see that we're getting a read from the battery. It's less than zero, so we're drawing on it, so we need to be careful of that. Uh, we're going to start with the mags, and we're going to go for a start on engine number two. So right mags can come on. I'm going to engage the fuel pump on the right engine. Introduce the mixture. Mixture rich. And we're going to prime it. Very good. Clear prop. And we'll go for start. Oh, 
Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. 4pm is rising. Oil pressure coming up. We have a good start on the right engine. Great. Okay, fuel pump off. Now we repeat those steps for engine one on our left hand side. So the mags be turned on. Let's watch the RPM build up. They've actually modeled this quite well. It takes a moment for the for the engine to warm up. So let me see. Fuel pump on the left engine. Keep her down on the low side. Bring her fuel in. Prime it. Air prop. And we should have spinage. Engines holding. Pressure rising. Good start on the left. Nice. Fuel pump off. Close the window. Lock the uh, lock the little handle. Now, quick check down on our electrical components. So we can see now that the right and left um, alternators are working. We're getting a charge on the battery. And the battery's holding nicely. Volts coming up here at about 26, 27. 25. That'll do. Okay, so our electrics are working just fine. At this stage, we're going to power up the avionics unit. So, quick check. Make sure there's nothing there that's going to cause us any grief. Avionics master switch to on. Alright. Blood pressure's rising. Hoban, good to see you. Okay, Muse. Thanks for letting me know, dude. Okay, so we're just giving these a few moments to warm up. I think the mixture down here, so we're not going to fail the engine. Okay, let's go in and have a look. So this is our autopilot unit. We're going to turn on the flight directors. They'll come on to our heading indicator and our artificial horizon. Uh, little HSI down here. That's grand. We'll play with this now in a moment. Uh, altitude set for autopilot. We'll go ahead and set 4,000. Our little Honeywell system. Thank you. Uh, distance measuring equipment, DME. Don't need that. We're going to be flying this on GPS. So we're going to go to map mode. Change our course deviation indicator. It's currently on VLOC 1. We're going to put it onto GPS. And we'll zoom out here a little bit. And we're going to start putting in a flight plan. All right. So if you put in exclamation point route, it'll give us the route. So our departure airport is that LFQF. Our first, pardon me, we're going to fly over... LFSD. Uh, now, oh, that's not actually our destination. Need to change that, Murph. Our destination, beg your pardon, is going to be uh, Geneva. LSGG. And we'll add some waypoints along the way. How's that? So we're going to say LFSD. Is that correct? LFSD, yes. Then it's LFQM. LFQM. LFQM then it's LFSB LFSB Basel and then we're good and then we're good lads I've noticed YouTube is normally 35 seconds behind what is it? Uh, this was on sale for 20 bucks recently oh dude dude hey Patrick is here good to see you uh, Twitch has been lagging for me as well. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of people having issues with Twitch. I was one of them as well. Right, so let's have a quick check here on our flight plan just to make sure we're going the way we want. We are VFR today. LFQF, LFSD, LFQM, LFSB, and then of course LSGG. That's looking fairly good to me. And all should be well. What do we say? About 242 nautical miles in total. That looks correct. All right, back into our map. Quick zoom out just to make sure it visually makes sense, which it does. And we can remove some of the information here just to make life a little bit easier. Uh, terrain we will use. And the Jordan Mountains, they're over this neck of the woods. They're in front of Lake Geneva. Right? So that's what we're going to do. Now our transponder, a couple of ways to set that, but uh, let me see. We go standby mode over here with our beautiful GTX 345. ADF, again, we're not going to be using VOR, NDB or ADF. Everything's gone into the, uh, onto the GPS for us, right? Chases, I have two units here. How handy is that? We could go weather or indeed charts. Um, procedures nearest. I suppose we could nearly do traffic on this one. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and traffic should be turned on. 
Okay, so we were looking up here. So let me see. Fuel left and right. Uh, our CFS 2000. Hello there. I keep breaking this. 84.7, 20.6, fill up, verify, test is working, enter. Left and right. Well, that's they're going to be different, aren't they? Hmm. I need to read up on how to work this gadget. But anyway, we won't worry about it. We just got hello there. L uh, who be this? Late guy, Texas. Thank you very much indeed for the follow. Welcome in. Welcome in. TJ Turner is here. Hello, TJ. Vermega. Good to see you. Lads, you're all very welcome aboard. Okay, so we're going to squawk. We're via 4 so we're going to put it on altitude mode. That's looking fine here. Uh, over to the right-hand side, we have some environmental controls, mainly with our cabin air and the devil knows what. We have some important things in there, including a book from Flight Safety. Pretty handy. Uh, right, now, before we get going, we will hit the B for resetting our barrel, and we'll hit the D to make sure our directional gyro is doing what it needs to do. We're also going to engage the taxi lights, and everything else here looks pretty good. We do have hydraulic fluid warnings, but they'll probably disappear once I increase a bit of power here. Let's test that before we go. There we go. So we're all right for the moment. Okay. It's been 112 years. It's fine. Totally fine. So parker brake coming off. It's a very short taxi. We're at Papa. Now what I will do, I'll do a very quick run up and then we'll get multiplayer turned on. How's that for the plan? I just mind the old terrain here because it looks terribly bumpy. Terribly, terribly bumpy. Uh, are you going to fly this plane or you're trying to sell it? I should have been like, get shares and fly somewhere or something, will you? It's a cracker of a plane. Anyone who has the 414, it's very, very good. Easy now, Jemima. Okay, so before we get out onto the active, I just want to do a quick run-up test. We'll do it up here at the whole short line. How's that? Uh, and while we're doing that, we're going to pop on the landing lights because they do take a moment to come on. Decent sounds, isn't there? So there's the lights coming on there now, right? They kind of have to spool into position. So park and brake is set, we're going to put the mixture up, and we're going to increase our RPM. About 1700, or 1800 will do. Okay, quick test on our mags, we're looking for a drop of about 50. Very good. Very good, right engine is sound, try the left engine. That's good. And that's good. Nice. Cycle the prop. There's one. Drop an RPM. There's two. Rise in manifold pressure. And three. There's a drop in fuel flow. Grand. Perfect. Run up complete. Sound, lads. Sound. Right. Engage one notch of flaps. Let them come into play, activate multiplayer, get ourselves situated here. Uh, it's taxi forward, left side departure. Am I on live weather? No, I'm not actually. However, I don't know what live weather is doing. Is it worth a punt or is it mad? Scorpio, is it mad? Uh, I love it and I think it's the best twin in Microsoft Flight Sim. Ooh. And it did have the best sounds until the Vulcan came along. Nuts, live weather. Live is okay. <laughs> is it? We'll give it a shot, just to see what the crack is like. Looks okay. Live is okay. They're all saying live is okay. There's a terrible long stutter though. Couple of stutters there. We'll give it a moment, give it a moment. Ooh. High pressure. This will, make, this will make the flight very interesting. Empire kicking us here. Good to see you, Empire. Thank you so much indeed for the raid, my dude. We got a couple of planes. Okay. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and a tier one subscription. Thank you very much indeed, Empire. Hope you guys had a wonderful stream. You join us here about to depart on the start of our flight for tonight. 
Uh, we're on live on the Southeast Asian server, and uh, airport departure is Lima Fox, Quebec, Fox. Hey, Balut, good to see you. Right, lads, on your bike. Let's be having ye. We shall take off, and it's going to be a right hand pattern. So, departure to the right. Up the yard. Parker Bay coming off. It's a mass exodus. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour. You're going to see some serious shit. You just will, right? It looks, sounds, and flies great. Ooh. Come on now, lads. You're number 37 for departure. Daz Higgy, good to see you. Ooh, we got a Honda jet. Whoever, whoever's in the King Air, they have the right idea. They're just saying, no, feck it, plow through these lads. Come on, lads, all together now. No hanging around. We can all go. It's all totally fine. Nothing to see here at all. Jesus, we need to have some sort of structure here. Like, it's just, just fly. Someone only paid four fifths of a plane to the right. Do you know what that is? I deleted textures trying to free up some space and it didn't actually work. Do you know? Jesus, for anyone tuning in and watching, they're going to say, see that flying circus? They're a mad bunch of lads. Mad bunch of lads. Can I get a refund? No, there's no refunds. Good to see you, Dan. Oh, there's going to be a crosswind takeoff here. Oh, nice. Oh, Jesus, there is lots of people here. This is brilliant. I can see nothing from this view. All together now, lads. You're doing great. Soaring AJ is about to get airborne. Reckless Ray. ZG Walker. There's Rob over there. Simon. Kozaki. I don't know why your bonanza isn't showing right. Very strange. Got some Kodiaks with us as well. Look. Lead Ballooner. You need a controller. We we could do with a controller. Oh, Jesus. Right, Rob. Let's be having you. Simon's just going to burst through as well. And should we listen? We know AZ Blue Line is just going to go hammer after tail. Look, it'd be grand. Up the yard. Ah, brilliant. How are we looking? Jesus, Quasi Archer has the same problem. Look. Holy crap, there's a lot of people here, isn't there? There's a total gridlock. Ryan's in the 310. Beautiful. Beautiful departures here, lads. Just be careful of the windage. Do you know what I mean? It looks kind of dodge, doesn't it? It looks terrible dodge. Now, can I do something? Jesus, Morph, come on, will you? You're holding up the parish. Don't mind me now. When will we have a 421? I don't know. A 421, you say? Sorry, Fast Pete. Go on ahead. Southeast Asia, TJ. Yeah, jump on in. Um, I'll just edge forward here, will I? It's totally fine. I'll edge forward. Don't mind me. All is well in the realm. Okay. Are we ready? Let's do our thing. So heading bug. We're walking, talking, and indeed squawking. Let's go. Power coming in. Ooh, the wind. Take off power set. Speed alive. There's 60. Come on now, Betsy. There's 80. There's 90. Yep, see Daisy. Positive rate of climb. Indicate the climb. Gear up. Oh, she's windy up here, lads. Three hundred feet, flaps in. Easy now, Chuck. Easy now. Who said live weather was grand? It's positively windy over here. Is it just windy everywhere in the world? Right turn coming in. Easy. Easy. Altitude. Uh, 
vertical speed. Apollo 2000. My sim is doing all sorts of weirdness. Autopilot engage, heading mode on, and vertical speed. Coming up on 4,000. Get those landing lights in. Taxi lights off as well. Stabilize the aircraft. Easy does it. <sighs> what size is, what side is my monitor? What side or what size? Bit of wind never hurted anyone, right? Uh, right, now let me see. So we need to do one of these. Um, so friends, if you're flying along with us, if you're on the Xbox, press 1. If you're on the PC, press 2. And if you're here in absolute awe and amazement at me haircut, um, <clears throat> you press number 3. Hello Fireflies. Welcome to the Flying Circus. We live stream every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 20 hundred Zulu time. Right here. Right, all right, all right. This is precisely, Paul, how the Romans invaded Britain. Absolutely. Um, who have we got? We have 33 in the PC, two on console, and myself. Thank you very much, Super Die. Excellent. Right, how are we looking here now? We're over here. Right, so we need to start uh, getting ourselves situated here on our route. Look, that doesn't look terribly right, although it kind of does. If we zoom in here, we're not actually on the flight path per se. Percy, who's Percy? So we're going to do a very slight turn to the right and we're going to intercept this. So we're going to turn right 090 degrees and we're going to arm nav mode. GPS should take over and then fly us to exactly where it is we want to go. We also have some traffic monitoring which is off the friggin hook. It looks amazing. Uh, now, let me see. GPS altitude says three and a half thousand feet yet four is indicated. So I don't know why she's doing that. Let's leave it be. Prop sync can now be activated. We're going to calm the ship down a little bit. Bring our mixture down. RPM is stable. Power, keep it in the green. RPM back to 2500. Which is fairly, you know, heavy. We can have a look here of our exhaust gas temperature. Uh, we can keep it quite high. Again, you can, you know, we want to be just lean of peak. We're fairly lean of peak, but we're grand. Uh, oil pressure, temperatures, everything looking good. We're all in the green. Fuel quantity is good. And as we have a quick look over here, we're now headed due east. And we're going to turn this devil in the direction of our flight. So it's going to be roughly 060 degrees. So we're expecting this little devil here to go on the straight and narrow. I'm also going to bring my heading indicator to put it in, a, in the direction we want. Uh, just in case we have any issues with our GPS. On the left hand side, cabin altitude, we're okay. We don't need to worry too much. We do have oxygen on board. Uh, but for the moment, we're just grand. We're not going up too terribly high. So I think we're all right, lads. On rental power again, right? 
sorry, size. So my main monitor is a, I think it's a 48 inch. Yeah, it's a 48 inch LG OLED. It's the C1. It was the first one that came out. But the bonus there is you get, it's an OLED. So the blacks and the, you know, the, this thing makes blacks absolute as dark as possible. The, the colors, right? So if you're flying at nighttime, lighting really jumps out at you. If you ever see an OLED TV do that, the, the color definition, the shadows, the anything that's dark is incredible. Like when if you look at the color black on other TVs, especially kind of LCD, well, they're not very, it's not real black. It's like very, 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 very dark blue, right? Them sort of fellas. But um, overall, they're, they're not bad. The OLEDs, I love them. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you see lay people wearing what look like black socks. But if you look closely, you'll see they're very, 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 very dark blue. Never buy black socks in a normal shop. They'll shaft you every time. That sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I, the OLED is great. The only thing is, though, um, you get burning. Do you know what I mean? Um, now, uh, give us... What's that? Give us a back view of the monitor. Or give us... Give us a back view of the monitor. A back view, you say. There's the monitor in front of me. So I have a screen here. That's me map, right? I have your main sim. My chat lives here. My OBS is there. And my Discord mods is up there. That's what I need when I go fly. I have another screen here. You can't really see it. Hang on. If I move out of the way. I have another monitor in there. Uh, and that's another map. You know, I need two maps. I'm stupid. Uh, and then an iPad over here, but I haven't fully configured out this area. I'm not entirely happy with what is under the telly, right? I have to work on that, but we'll get there eventually. Do you know what I mean? We'll get there eventually. And he doesn't look at Discord mods nearly enough. I do! I don't. <laughs> but I will. I I'll endeavour to work better. I'll endeavour to work better. Now, what was our flight plan here? Just so I know, uh, lads. Let's, 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 let's. So, uh, yes, we're overflying this first airport. It's a flyover. We ain't landing there. Our first stop, lads, is at LFQM. LFQM. That's our first stop. LFSD, we're just going to fly over it. Wow, look at that weather. Jesus, look at that weather. Isn't it beautiful? Good call on live weather, lads. Absolutely stunning. Look at this. Beautiful. Very impressive. Thank you, Badgers. Very kind of you. Um, right, now. So, no, we're doing all right so far now, right? So, I left you in this position. So, Caesar said, right, head up the road there now is a good lad. So, we did. Caesar uh, closed in on the Germans. He set up fortifications, eventually. Yeah, baby. <laughs> MDA is here for 13 months. Thank you very, very much indeed. Cheers, man. Um, oh, I meant to say, as Caesar... Uh, was approaching them, right? He had to move through the dense forest areas, often blocking the sun, leaving the legions in complete darkness. These trees soared hundreds of feet in the air. It was incredibly uh, dense. And the forests reminded the Romans of the bogeyman. You see, Rome was once sacked by the Gauls, but 350 years prior to this, the Gauls came down and sacked Rome, right? Crazy stuff. Anyway, it spooked the Roman legions. They started hallucinating, thinking that, Jesus, we're going up against these mad Germanic people. They're 15 feet tall. You know, they can breed fire and they're cannibals. Ah! Right? That's what they thought. Caesar didn't like this sort of, you know, messing going on in the ranks. So he had to deal with the problem. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Barrigan, thank you very much indeed. 25 months, dude. Very kind of you. Cheers, man. So Caesar fighting with the, uh, fighting with this problem. His troops, like, you know what I mean? Losing the will. He gathered his centurions. And he absolutely shamed them. What are you not doing? Why are the lads talking about 15 feet fire breathing Germans? What are you talking about? Do your job, will yous? That seemed to have sorted it. Because after Caesar kind of, you know, stuck it to the centurions, they were like, ah, oh, yes, very good, Caesar. Lads, it's, it's, don't worry. These are just a load of brutes from across the Rhine. They're barbarians and we're going to give them a good decking. Right? Essentially, that's what happened. So they all calmed down. So, once Caesar then got closer 
to Ariovistus, where he set up fortifications and a camp. And oddly, as soon as Caesar arrived there, a letter came to him. Remember, Caesar was trying to get in contact with Ariovistus, wouldn't entertain him. All of a sudden, emissaries were sent. We want to meet. So Caesar said, grand. However, Ariovistus stipulated some rules. Under no circumstances could any infantry support you or come with you. Only cavalry. And we will meet on a neutral ground. Now, to put things into context, Caesar... None of his fellow countrymen were in the cavalry. He had Numidian, he had Numidian cavalry. He had mercenaries from all over Gaul. They were his cavalry. This didn't suit Caesar. So he said, I know what to do. Caesar instructed his favourite legion, the 10th legion, to mount horses to accompany him. And from that day until, you know, forevermore, it became known as the 10th mounted legion. So, Caesar and his bow me hand cavalry only rambled up to meet with first and get or with Ariovistus and the two lads met. Ariovistus, he seemed agitated. He was sparring for a fight, but didn't engage. There was a couple of you do this and you know, they passed a few of the Roman equivalent to Yo Mama jokes, but nothing really came from this. Caesar was somewhat shocked. He couldn't understand why the Germans simply just wouldn't engage in battle. The Germans completely outnumbered the Romans. They were better supplied, better equipped. They probably even had better morale. Yet, no. Even the Suebi harassed the German so or the uh, Roman soldiers who were there. You know, they threw javelins and threw stones. The Romans kept their discipline. They just didn't engage. So, after pretty much a wasted afternoon... Caesar returned to his camp, and Ariovistus did the same. Caesar was freaked by this. Like, why aren't they attacking? Well, it turns out there was a Roman spy in the German camp who snuck out and made it back to Caesar's tent. And he said, Hail Caesar. Come here to me, he said. You'll never guess what. Do you see those German lads? Yeah, well, they're not going to go into battle. They're waiting for favour from the gods. Huh? Yep. Ariel visited. He wanted nothing more than to go down and show these Romans how things are done, you know, German style. Uh, no, the gods didn't favour it. He was waiting on his druids to come back with positive news. And day after day after day, they never came back with the positive news. They said, no, it, it, not today, not today. So Ariel Vistus wouldn't bring or lead his men into battle. We're passing our first waypoint. Look down! There's an airport just under us, near us, over there. Is There, look. Ah, brilliant. Now, Caesar, getting word of this? This was like winning the friggin' lotto. Hang on a second. If I attack now, I'll have the element of surprise. Maybe, just maybe, the Germans will be reluctant to fight because they're waiting to hear, or wait, they're waiting on the favour of their gods. The next morning, Caesar, up at the crack of dawn, rallied his entire force and launched a full-scale attack. Did the Jesus. Now, the Germans, once they were called to arms and started fighting, well, there was no sign that these guys were hesitant, not waiting or waiting on their gods to favour battle. They gave it everything they got. And we're going to learn about the battle in a little while. But here... We're going to ramble over and well, let's learn a little bit about the cultural and military dynamics between the Romans, the Suebi and indeed the other Gallic tribes. You see, Roman culture was a blend of ancient Italic and Greek influences. The Greeks, massive influence on Rome. It was highly urbanised with a focus on law, literature and monumental architecture. Latin, of course, being their main lingua franca, and the society was structured around the principles of law, citizenship, and military duty. Latin, of course, the language of Rome, it was used in administration, literature, communications, up and down the Roman Empire. The Suebi, on the other hand, while part of the larger Germanic cultural sphere, they were more tribal and rural. 
The society. Yeah, was... baby. <laughs> Jesus. Avo92, thank you very much indeed. 29 months, dude. Thank you very much. Uh, the Suebi, part of the larger Germanic sphere. They were more tribal and rural. The society was structured around clans and warrior elites. Their practices and traditions were orally transmitted with a focus on ancestral worship and nature. The Suebi spoke an early form of Germanic language, distinct from Latin, with no written tradition during this period. Hmm. The religion, right? The Romans, heavily influenced by the Greek mythology, well, they had a pantheon of gods. They worshipped household gods, and they were known for adopting gods from other cultures. The Suebi, they were actually quite similar. They had a pantheon of gods related to nature, war, and daily life. Their religious practices included sacrificial rites. Jesus, sacrifice, mass sacrifice, it'll be brilliant. Then when we talk about the equipment, we've learned, you know, last week, the Roman equipment when it came to combat equipment, weaponry, they were like a different league lads. They were miles ahead. Romans having such things of, you know, a highly organised, disciplined and professional standing army. Legionnaires were equipped with the gladius, the pilum, the scutum, and they also wore segmented plate armour. The Suebi, on the other hand, they were fierce and valorous, but far less organised in formal units. They fought with spears, shields, and they were known for their effective use of the war axe. Armour was less common, reserved only for the wealthier warriors. Interesting. So who was this Ariovistus? Well... He was a king and a war leader of the Suebi. Known for his bravery and leadership, he commanded respect and fear amongst his people and his enemies. His involvement with Gaul all came down to one of the Gallic tribes requesting assistance from their Germanic cousins to come help settle a feud. Ariovistus, of course, I'll come over and help you, bringing his 100,000 plus soldiers into the region. And of course, the Gallic tribe who called for his assistance, thinking, Asher, Ario will just ramble over, give the lads a decan, and then head her on. But he didn't. Ario Vistus thought Gaul was just wonderful to rule and to expand his empire. Yep. We're going the wrong way. We're not going the right way. No, wait, we are. We're going the right way. All is well. Uh, I give over here. Gimbo was here for a moment and then he's like, what? No. How you, Gimbo? Good to see you, man. <laughs> this is not Gimbo's cup of tea. Anyway. Um, hello there. Hello there. <laughs> hello there. P.S. Miranda, good to see you. Um, so Arius, or Ario Vistus, he established himself. He wanted to be the ruler of this new country. And that scared the bejesus out of the other Gallic tribes. They didn't like this. And it also annoyed Caesar. I mean, Caesar fancied Gaul, his backyard, his expansion area, he wasn't going to play nice here. The Gallic tribes. They were constantly fighting against each other, as tribes do. Fighting for power and organising weddings and all the sort of jazz to expand their own dominion. But the problem was there were so many individual tribes fighting against each other, no one really took the overall force. Had the all the Gallic nations, you know, if they were to unite under someone... Now you're dealing with a competent force. But individually, you would be able to... Say, for example, you didn't like these lads. Well, you'll find someone else in Gaul who also didn't like those lads and they'd help you out. Do you know what I mean? What's that saying? My my enemy's enemy is my friend or something. That sort of stuff, right? So it was interesting. So some of the tribes, of course, then allied with Caesar. Here's this Roman general, after bringing the Roman legions into places they had never seen combat before. I mean, the Romans have never advanced into Gaul prior to this. These lads could know what they're doing. So they were invited, come on up here and sort out this godforsaken mess. Now think about it. What did the Gallic tribes who invited Ariovistus over, what did they think was going to happen? We'll invite Ariovistus over, he'll defeat our enemy, and then he will withdraw. Gauls, they lined themselves up for the mistake twice. 
He assumed Caesar will just ramble over, get rid of this Germanic problem, and ramble back. History tells us that didn't exactly go to plan. Do you know? So, the tapestry and cultural, linguistic, and religious diversities between the Romans, the Suebi, and even the various Gallic tribes, and we can see the contrasting military weapons and capabilities between the Romans and the Suebi, very, very different in terms of the military side, but very similar in terms of the belief side. Very, very interesting when you see these sort of things kind of, you know, happen. Conflict, do you know? So, the Suebi were waiting favourable signs from their religious leaders, the Druids, before fully committing to battle. Day after day, Druids reported that the gods had not yet given the sign, causing a massive delay with Ariel Vistus being able to launch his attack. But then all of this was made known to Caesar after the Roman spy within the Suebi camp relayed this crucial information. Like, there has to be, like, a, you'd make a movie on that. Think about it. Double O, hang on. What's zero in Roman numerals? There's a question. Is there a zero in Roman numerals? Do you know what I mean? XI77 seven, seven or something. Right. Madness. Absolutely madness. Now, while we're here, let's learn some of this stuff, right? Um, Scroll down here now to where you have it. Where is the stuff I wanted to learn? Give me notes here somewhere. Ah, here we go. Give me notes. So let's focus on some of the uh, some of the beliefs. Oh wait, we'll land first, and then we'll learn about some of the Roman beliefs. For example, the festival of Saturnalia, the sacred chickens. I'll remind you about those. The Vestal Virgins, Janus, the two-faced god. Right, we'll learn all about this now in a second. Right now, uh, right, Morph, uh, you're doing well now. Don't make a hash of it. They use the word. Nulla. Wait, nulla. <laughs> it wasn't invented yet. Romans didn't have a zero. Did they not? The zero was imported into Europe. There you are. There you go. Egyptian superstar... Ah, oh, Jesus. Muse is at now. Egyptian superstar Mohamed Salah, one of the best international footballers playing the game today, and he has achieved a few, a, a few impressive streaks for his Liverpool FC team. First, the most consecutive matches with a goal scored for Liverpool... 10 matches, and second, the record for the most consecutive home games with a goal scored, 9 matches. Believe it or not, Liverpool didn't have a mascot until 2012. Ah, the club was sold to Fenway Sports. Mighty Red, a little red Liverbird was introduced in 2012, and the Liverbird became a symbol of the city of Liverpool for centuries. Shower of... Shower. Right, anyway, we need to land here, right? Can I sub to your channel? Ha <laughs> ha! Don't you want? Me two community managers are going to get the ban hammer now in a second. Lights on for landing. This is going to be tricky here for a second. Look, we need to land here somewhere. Jesus, lads, who's in charge? So our first landing of the night, and I can't see a thing. Right, Murph. Autopilot off. Bring the power back. And get down out of this... Jesus, get down out of this cloud a little bit, right? Easy does it down, Ula. Easy now. We'll get under the cloud layer, and we shall turn back to land. We're pretty much directly over the runway, so just give it a couple of moments. Give it a couple of moments. As the 414 state saving, Whiskey Tango, yes it does. <laughs> ah, Gibbo and Muse. A great bunch of lads. Little do they know there's going to be a test on this. There's one bat. Easy now, plane. Easy, easy. Need to get that speed down a little bit. We'll circle out here to the left. That's going to be a turn out to the right. Bad for your wallet? Yeah. Time to pull the big switch, good money. Welcome in, Raiders. Uh, Twainsey, thank you very much indeed for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. Okay, right, lads. Speed 160, start a right-hand turn. We're going to head back for the runway as we make our first stop of the night. Easy. 
Easy now. Yes. Bit of Toby I here to help us out. Although we can't see much. Speed run 40. Right, start slowing us down, Murph. Easy now, Jemima. We have a runway over there somewhere. There we go, power's coming back. Runway's over there. Watch your speed. Oh, it's windy here too. Okay, runway inside. Ease our way into it, lads. Ease our way in. Keep an eye on your speed. Keep it around 100 knots or so. This aircraft does not like low speed at all. You did ATC on Donegal. Nice! Simon already got a minus 79. Are you serious? There was four, but the raid bugged out. You're fine. Thank you very much indeed for raiding on over to. It's very kind of you. Right, first landing of the night coming up. It better be pretty. Predict 144. <laughs> Easy does it down, Jemima. So our first landing over at... Uh, is it Bisankan? Bisankan? It should be fine. The weather is quite nice. Definitely challenging. The Chala is there looking good. Captain Meowenting's looking good. We'll ease our way in, right? We'll ease our way in. Not too worried about the pappies from this. We're just gonna, like, you know... We're going to wing it. Watch our speed, though. Keep it above 100 knots. Flaps set. Gear is down. Yaw dampener's off. We shall take our time. We shall take our time. No pressure, Si. Yeah, what did you get again? Minus 79. Jesus. Are you in live weather, Si? Be honest now. Predictions into the chat. The bot should uh, record me landing rate. I hope. Full props, full mixture. We're on full prop. We're on full mixture. Oh, Jesus, a prop sink. Turn that off. There you go. She doesn't like prop sink on the landing. Have you counted the freckles on your shaven arm yet, Murph? Why are you talking about me shaving arm? The hairiest arm. The hairiest arm. You just can't see the hair because they're blonde. <laughs> There's over a thousand. Yeah. There's over a thousand. Oh, Jesus, go handy now. Live item or not live time, gotcha. Jesus, I, that's good going, man. Easy. Okay, now we're looking decent. Easy. Oh, where is the wind blowing? <laughs> it doesn't feel right. Is the wind blowing behind us? Uh oh. There's people going around. <laughs> Toad, I like a challenge. Easy. Easy. Decision height, we're landing. Dreamy, we're sleepy, nighty, oh, snoozy, no. snooze. Who turned off my lights? Two dogs! What are you down to me? Right, easy now. Jesus. Oh, God, the wind. And there's a airliner on the runway. Ah, oh, brilliant. Jesus. Easy. 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 Easy, easy, easy. Uh-oh, put it down. 140. We'll take it. In that wind, we'll take it. Jesus, Sai Murray got a great landing, didn't he? Huh? Grand Sai. Jesus. No, Dougal, weather seems to be accurate, as in the windsock is blowing that direction. Oh, careful now. As in, the windsock is blowing the right direction. Do you know what I mean? Where are we going? Go on the grass here now for a minute, look. As we uh, taxi back this way. Squawk Torque is in. Nicely done. <sighs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Right. We made it. Our first. I owe me hand. I keep bashing it. Why is that doing that? Right. First stop of the night complete. Next up, we're heading over to LFSB. We're heading over to the River Rhine, lads. The Rhine. 63 nautical mile hop. 
And from there then, we're going to hightail it back to Zurich. So we are about to face the battle with the Suebi. Look at that friggin' weather sock look. Why is the entire planet windy? Everyone is getting... Oh, Jesus, look at the DA-62. Ah! Everyone's fighting the wind. Oh, what a song, Rad Baron. Uh, tier zero, good to see you. Murph, I'm loving these flights. Last time, I really felt I was with the Romans as they crashed their chopper through the trees. Narrowly missing the high ground. A great history... Well, that's what it's all about, tier zero. You know... We like to keep things accurate. The Romans, of course. You know, flying modern aircraft. But the nice thing is, we're kind of flying over these regions. Do you know what I mean? And if you kind of pick history that's not too far uh, away, it's very political. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take pot, looking good. But yes. Very accurate, the Romans. But like, what is cool, apart from the flying and like, the flying is just cool, right? But what is super cool, the fact that you can visit these areas in the sim, because, well, let's face it, lads, there's a lot of places in the world you just won't ever get the chance to visit. So isn't it kind of awesome that we can kind of do it virtually? And I love history, so like, you know what I mean? That wind was nuts, Ryan, you did a great job. Oh, Jesus. Right. Let us line ourselves up here as we get ready for a takeoff. Oh, what happened there? See that? Everything turned off. All my electrics cut out. What happened there? That can't be good. Did you see that? Glitch? Or problem with the plane? I think problem with the plane. And dreadful friggin' performance. Interesting. Never seen that before. No maintenance. Uh, I did nothing. Put another coin in the electric meter. He's only gone and broke the plane. Did the Irish invent Roman helicopters? We did. We did. Um... Marv, when will we have an official military airbase for Firefly Air? I'm not telling you, Viper, it's a secret. Um, put another coin in it. You've angered the gods. <laughs> uh, Viper, there may not be one. But, like, we're kind of we're kind of busy with, you know, stuff at the moment. Now, uh, yeah, that's very strange. Why, all of a sudden, did we just lose power? Hmm, I'm a little bit worried. But sure, listen, we won't worry about it too much, lads. Although something's not right here. Why is that goosed? That's proper goose. Why is that caged? Oh. We have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Something's after going pop. Everything here looks good. Everything appears to be in order. What's over here now? Everything here. Everything here looks good. That's strange, isn't it? Gyro, yeah. Gyro's working. Oh. We have power. Alternators are feeding the battery. We have 28 volts. Weather? Unlikely. Very unlikely. What's the freaking temperature? Hello there. Hello there. Do we have a little temperature gauge? Surely we have an outside air temperature. That's like 10 degrees. There is suction. They've done studies, you know. To look at this big of the just... time, it look. works every time. 
how can I test that? Turn off the avionics for a minute. Turn them back on. That's so strange. This is after failing. Look. How weird is that, lads? But fly on. We won't worry about it too much, but I can't uncage that. Oh no, we're in proper trouble here. Look, this is shagged. Autopilot is gone. Ooh. She ain't liking this. Where's the f Okay, let me see. Fuel lights. They're all good. Can't get FSU IPC to work at LRM. I've, uh, I'm expecting an update on LRM soon, lads. Right, nav. Transponder, DME, autopilot. Very, very strange. Let's see what happens when we get airborne, right? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Do you know what I mean? Right, power coming in. Let's see what happens with the crack. Never had this issue happen before. Hey, Gary, good to see you. Speed 90. Yep, see Daisy. Positive rate of climb and indicated. Gear up. We have a hydraulic pressure warning. I think this is a bug. Seven point four point three is broken. Oh wait. Oh that's FSU IPC, is it? Okay, spin around to the right here. Scroll her up the old uh, trim murph. Easy now. The odd dampener's on. Flight director. Nothing. Autopilot. Nothing. How strange. Okay. We'll hand fly it. I know this is shocking, but he broke it. I actually don't know what I did. But easy does it now. Power back is a bit. I've no significant load on our electrical systems. Gyro's still spinning. Like, our instruments are working, just the autopilot looks to have... gave up the goat. That's weird, isn't it? I'm in a glass case of emotion! we we'll fly the plane! Gibbo did it. Skill issue? I blame... Who can we, we blame Gibbo? Okie dokie. Get ourselves somewhat lined up here. So we need a heading of 065 degrees and for 63 nautical miles. Okay. That's so weird, isn't it? Like the instrument is working. Our, our, slip, our, our slip indicator is working. Autopilot is just shanked. Right. Ever happened to you before? There's rain on the plane's radar. Uh oh. Like we have a light on here saying, you know, autopilot off. We know we know it's off, but like five thousand feet. Can I get a refund? No refunds. Like where's she even? It's not like the screen has failed. And there's no way to, there's no way to kind of override that. We could probably use flow, maybe. You know, you going up? We could probably use flow. 
Mr. Listen, we'll hand flight and see what happens. I have a left hydraulic flow error. How do I fix that? Uh, one second. Cabin, that's all okay. Aircon, don't need to worry about that. What's this unslaved? Uh, like, I can't move that dial. That's so strange. And usually you get a flag or something popping up. Not working. And it's dead on this side, look. Jesus. Vertical speed. What's your altitude here? Although I do want to stay above the clouds, right? This is interesting. I've never had this issue before. Let's see if we figure it out together, right? If we don't have the use of our autopilot for the moment, I need to figure out why that is. Any thoughts, lads? Should have flown the Beechcraft? <laughs> this is interesting. How do we troubleshoot this one? It's instrument is working. It's just not reading. Rebooting your PC. Oh, Jesus. Check weather radar failures page. If this has it. Doesn't have it. Reset avionics power. Try that. Like, these are powered by the gyro and usually, like... What's this one over here do? Cabin heat, cabin fan, windshield, anti-ice, de-ice? Unlikely. Who's in charge? I don't now know! Haven't you haven't a clue what you're doing. No problems with the electrics. From what you can see. Our main avionics buses are working. Just the autopilot is completely kicked out. But if you notice when we had this problem, the um the aircraft kind of shook. Start engines in the tablet. Ready to start, start engines. Nope. This isn't going to tell us what's wrong either. Isn't that weird? Okay, watch your climb here now. Epic fool, good to see you. Circuit breaker, it's got to be, but I can't see it popped. These guys are all in line. Right? These guys. Ah, Jesus, Murphy. These guys are all in line. Nothing there sticking out. No other circuit breakers that I'm aware of. What are they back here? There are alternators. Weird, weird. Try restart with a fuse. Try to. Blame Brexit. Reset the breaker anyway. Pop them out and in. Okay, well, we need to go find in this devil. Jesus, my head's off. Uh, what are we talking? Autopilot, isn't it? Let's have a look. Uh, spare, no. Toilet flush. Turn and bank. De ice. Lights. EGT engine. Landing gear, fuel, prop sync, starter. No, oh, still dead. Uh, Murph, you need to actually press autopilot rocker switch on the lower center pedestal on the throttles. Uh, 
Hey? You need to actually press the autopilot rocker switch on the lower center pedestal below the throttles. I didn't think there was one down here. We have trims, cowl flaps, nothing there, trim, trim indicator, emergency gear handle. Hey, Keen Lafford is here, good to see you. Hang on, lads, we'll be grand, nothing to worry about. Uh, fuel. Alpine autopilot. Yaw dampener. Only some of these work, not all of them. Directional gyro, that looks like the devil right there. Okay, I've cycled all of these. Now, it's did. Did. I think the autopilot switch location depends on which version of the GPS. So, with the with the PMS 50s installed, or the GTN 750s, I don't think I have that button. Unless there's a click spot hidden. Where does it usually live, Gibbo? Because it could be like a bug. There's no switch on either side there for the autopilot. Emergency shut off for the fuel. Like there's no click spot here that I can see. Most unusual. I was in Cork Hospital today visiting and I had to put a face mask on. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, really? Yeah, no panic, no panic. How high are we climbing? Well, we're probably gone too high. We're kind of seven or 8,000 feet. I'm not overly worried with our height for the moment. This is an interesting issue though. I've never come across it before. I've no circuit breaker popped. I've no failure that I can see other than these guys are shanked. But it's not just one, it's both. So both units have failed. But the gyro is still doing what it needs to do. Most unusual. Like, that artificial horizon, that is super important for flying. Like, super. Yeah, I tried to cycle the avionics. No dice. Okay, so we can... Hang on, look. So here's our flag, right? We turn it on. Flag disappears. Letting you know the unit is on. But she won't work. I like this. The plane is trying to kill us. Thanks, Gib. Gibbo. I didn't just call you Gib. I called you Gibbo. Yeah, it, it, there's, there's not even a hidden click spot here, look. Okay. What are you in? The 530? Yeah, 530s. Okay. We'll continue on. Reboot the GTN from a setup page. Nah, I don't think the GTNs are working fine. It's grand, it's grand. Here's a problem. This isn't working. That's got to be gyro, right? This system doesn't have failures. How do you fix failures? Or fix failures? Isn't there a button for that? Yeah. Failures. Or repair, isn't it? Repair, repair. Repair and refuel. Let's call it shift or. Uh, what's that for? Action on. You're trying to assign the devices. Time to pull the big switch, good buddy. Who be this? 
Control Major Tom, welcome in, Raiders. Hope you guys are keeping well. Give this grand too, it'll be called for a sorry give out. Mr. Gib! Yeah, so I can't repair my systems either. We have an avionics failure, which appears to be caused by some lack of gyro something. But welcome in. Thank you very much indeed for the raid. Hope you guys had a great stream. We're heading towards the Rhine. Paul Art, thank you for the follow. Good to see you, lads. This is pretty cool, lads. We actually have an issue. Yeah. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it right now. Right. Let's learn about a couple of... Uh, we could do with the, the help of the gods here now, right? So the festival of Saturnalia. This is a time when the Roman social norms were turned upside down. Slaves would become masters. And the masters would serve them. It was a festival full of merriment, and even the most serious of Romans would wear ridiculous clothes and party. Right? The festival of Saturnalia. That's what these lads got up to. Where the masters became the slaves. That's, that's hilarious. Anyway, this is the we, we told you about this one before, but consulting the sacred chickens. Before making important decisions, Roman generals would observe the eating habits of the sacred chickens. If the chickens ate eagerly, that was a good omen. If they refused to eat, it was a bad sign. The sacred chickens. The Vestal Virgins and their super-powered spit. Huh? The Vestal Virgins were believed to have spit with magical properties. If a slave touched one of the Vestal Virgins, they would be whipped. Oh, behave! If the Vestal spit on the slave afterward... The whipping was supposed to magically heal the wounds. What? Yeah, I'm gonna spit in you. What? Right? <sighs> I didn't make it up. Um, wait, you hear this? Um, the household gods. Romans had personal gods for everything, including their pantry known as Penates, and their home, the Lare. The god of the pantry. The god of the house. Then you had Janus, or Janus, the two-faced god. He was the god of doors, beginnings and endings. He had two faces, one looking to the past, the other looking to the future. It was believed that opening and closing doors can send a message to Janus. A Roman closing a door might have been like sending a do not disturb signal to the gods. What? I need a god of the lottery. Right? The Suebi, on the other hand, well, wait and you hear this. They had hair ties for the brave. Among the Suebi, it was tradition for young warriors to not cut their hair until they had slain an enemy in battle. How mad is that? And yet history depicts them as being all incredibly freaking hairy. Now, that means they haven't, like, beaten anyone. They haven't... Right? Reverence... Oh, no. Uh, reverence of the oak tree. The way we held oak trees as sacred, believing them to be the abode of the gods. We've seen this if you've watched... Um, that fella. Winter is coming. What's it called? Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Right? The trees. Anyway, they would worship in oak groves, making decisions and holding assemblies under these trees. That's mad, isn't it? Trees, lads. Trees. Upholding truth with ordeals. The Swaby were said to practice trial by ordeal, including walking over hot coals or holding a red hot iron. If they weren't burned, their innocence was proven. It was an early, albeit extreme version of a lie detector test. Just walk across the coal there. Huh? Yeah, if you're telling the truth, you won't feel it. <laughs> Jesus. Warrior women prophecies. Like many Germanic tribes, the Suebi highly respected their women warriors. Or warrior women. Who were believed to have prophetic... Uh, Powers. These women would go into trances and predict the outcome of battles. 
And then, lads, the wild hunt. The Suebi believed in a special phenomenon known as the wild hunt, a ghostly procession through the sky led by a god or mythical figure. Witnessing the wild hunt was an omen of impeding catastrophe. George was very bad weather, right? Isn't that mad? And these weren't just like, yes, these were, they were the law, man. That's what they believed in. That was, that was like absolute divine inspiration. Do you know what I mean? It's raining and everything. We're in a hoop here, lads. That's mad, isn't it? So, I left you up the road here. And, uh, well, Caesar getting word that Ariovistus and the entire Suebi were waiting on a favourable decision from the gods. It didn't come. So Caesar said, right, shag it. I'm going to attack. And he attacked. And there was an entire day of fighting. And just like what we saw with the Helvetii, after fighting all day and into the evening, the Roman war machine became victorious, beating the Suebi. In actual fact, after the battle, they pushed them all 15 miles back up to this line right here. For this, friends, is the River Rhine. This is the Rhine just ahead of us. The Rhine River, yeah? That's where we are. We are approaching the Rhine. So th these lands all the way along here, the Romans chased the Suebi back. Caesar wanted no prisoners. There were to be no, no prisoners. He wanted to wipe them out. It was a slaughter. And get this, Ariovistus, the man showing great honour, abandoned his wife and his child and escaped... Yeah, baby! <laughs> he escaped across the river on a raft, never crossing the Rhine again. I mean, what? He abandoned his wife and child, for which the Romans... You'll do. And he never set foot across that river again. That was the end of it. The Suebi pushed back across the Rhine. That was the end of it. Caesar defeating the second major army all in one summer was becoming a larger than life character back in Rome. Here's a Roman general who has not only, you know, destroyed the Helvetii, but he's pushed the, German or the Germanic tribes back across the Rhine. He was a hero. He was slowly but surely becoming the greatest general in Roman history. And for a very brief moment, the Gauls and the Romans celebrated him. Caesar was the man, man. He was the man. But of course, the Gauls, just what they thought when Ariovistus and the Suebi came over, well, they thought he'd come over, tidy the place up, you know, and then be on his merry way. Thanks very much for your help. Maybe we'll call you. But Caesar had no intentions of leaving Gaul, and his armies were going nowhere. What, like, your first engagements in battle, Caesar's first major engagements in battle, he absolutely nailed it. He pushed back two massive armies, fighting in places the Romans had never fought before. Here's Caesar out marking new territory, bringing stability to these barbaric lands. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. So we're going to try and land here. And this is going to be hilarious looking because the weather is giving it socks. My plane is not behaving. Dan, there's a good chance we're going to die. Yeah, the Rhine was a bridge too far, right? Okay, I can see lights in the distance. Runway 25 is what we're going for. Prop full. Mixture full. Let's see what we can do here, sports fans. I can't actually see the runway yet. All right. 
runway spotted? Isn't that mad, isn't it? Miss your all safe. Thank you very much indeed with the Twitch Prime. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, man. Now, someone had a hardware question here a moment ago. Colar says, I have a hardware question. What do you think of the Turtle Beach Flight Sim product? The HOTUS is very good. The joystick is supposed to be very good. Um, their yoke system is very good as well, albeit a bit plasticky in places. But it's supposed to be quite good. Anyone see our active runway? What do we say? 2 5. Jays is the wind. You have to go down this way a bit. I'm debating over Turtle Beach or the Airbus side stick. Turtle Beach is supposed to be very good. I've heard great, great reviews about it. If you head over to, is it G Lock Media? Do a, go, do a YouTube for G Lock Media. I think it's G Lock. I think it's G Lock. He does flight sim hardware reviews and stuff. He has the Turtle Beach joke. If you have a look at it, and if you're over there, drop me now a comment to say that, you know, we sent you. I think that's the runway over there. Almost certain. It is now, says you. And I'm thinking I'm going to have to do a very, very, very quick restart here, lads, because the aircraft, she ain't well, sure it's not. And I'm going to need autopilot for the next leg. So speed 130. Gear coming down. Why didn't the gear go down? Gear coming down. All right, let's see what we can do here. That's so weird that them instruments have failed. Has that ever happened to you guys? Jesus, that was close. Uh, the travel quadrant from Turtle Beach is amazing. Great trim. Falling up. There you go. Ryan White's autopilot was burst on the first leg as well. Yeah, what's up with that? Like, Grant. Right, we're a little bit high, but based on the wind, I think we're going to be okay. Let's give it a full notch of flaps here, and let's see what happens. There we go. That's a beautiful formation going in. Renoir, Wombat, and Catus Batus all flying in together. 100 hours in the 414, never seen it. Yeah. Uh, Monsieur also says, I have a Bravo. Just uh, want the airliner flying stuff. Yeah, CH product stuff. They were great back in the day, but like, you know. Decision height, we're landing. We hope. Jesus, this is sporty. Easy. 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 Hold the nose. Make it gentle, Murph. Make it gentle. 91, we'll take it. Claps in. Okay. Nima Foxtrot Sierra Bravo. Nice. That's Mulhouse, isn't it? Yeah. Basil Mulhouse. That's our location here. Okay. Bring the flaps back in. We'll give it a quick shutdown here, lads. I'm going to need to restart the other simulation. There's Dougal. Looking good, Dougal. Unless there's a way to fix this, but I don't see a way to fix this. Let's see, right? Park and brake on. Right, turn off the lights. Let's spare the old electricity here for the moment, right? Why were they on? Most unusual.
Okay. So the autopilot unit is shagged. Avionics off here for the minute. Uh, alternators bring it offline for the minute. And we'll shut her down. And let's see what we can do, right? This is the rain is coming in. Now turn off the battery. Turn on the battery. And get the avionics back in. So there's the flag. Gyro's not spinning. Right? The autopilot switch is now working. So we have a gyro flag here. So that's quite okay. Not the avionics. We'll start the right engine. Huzzah! Well, it kind of half worked and then it didn't. See the way it moved? Avionics on. We're getting closer to this. You're having hydraulic issues? See the way one of them come on? All right, let's try to start the other engine. Let's see what happens. Got some fuel in there, Murph. Okay. Both engines are on. Avionics, activate. The flag moves. We are, like, that's all working. No, she's not working. Very strange, lads, isn't it? Flight director is not working. But we need the gyro flag, to be honest. How weird is that? Now, better restart. Just to be sure, to be sure, to be sure. Reboot? Yeah, I think so. We'll give it a quick restart, lads. Give it a quick restart. Peter Heat on. Yeah, we'll have it on there now in a minute. Caesar will be multi or Caesar would mull over it having a salad. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh my 414 is acting up as well. And my left alternator keeps dying. It's strange. And I there, there's no um there's no failures built into the 414, which I just thought was like weird. Do you know what I mean? And we we'll come over here for a minute. And yeah, uh, how are you? And uh now let me see. So we're gonna wait for the O Sim to restart. A bit of background music here, Maestro. Uh, ooh. That's better. So how are we all doing, lads? Uh, is the Leaguer 35 also dealing with this? I've no idea. I've no idea. We'll, uh, we'll give it a few minutes. This will reboot. So while we're waiting, did you see the news there today, lads? Did you see the news today? That Aerosoft have decided to delay the production of the Airbus A330. Huh? They're going to wait until Flight Sim 2024 is released. This created quite the discussion. But I don't know, is that something that makes sense to you? Or was anyone like, what are they doing that for? You know? Uh, let me see. Hey, the Uncle B, good to see you. Typical Aerosoft. Learjet 35 is doing fine, says Cat Bat. Cat is bat is. Man, I need to kill the Sim. So here's one for you, right? Here's one for you. Muse, do you know the way your sim, uh, it, it never lets you quit it. it? It'll always just leave you kind of hanging there. Um, well, there's an add-on causing that. And I have an add-on that I'm showing off on Wednesday night, lads. We're going to be checking out the Challenger 350 from Sim Federation. And it's causing me sim not to shut down. Yes. It's all there. 
Uh, there'll be new functions in the twin in 2024 that give Airsoft an advantage. Maybe. Maybe not. It's hard to call, isn't it? Continue in normal mode. By the way, um, nah, mine works okay now. Which add-on was it? Um, I don't know. It's For me, it's not working right. And it's the uh, Challenger from uh, Sim Federation. Don't know why. Don't know why. Um, what was I going to say then as well? Did you watch the review of uh, the Cessna 182? Did you just watch it? Do you just like it? There's more coming. Every Sunday, I'll have a video coming out of reviews. And we have a fancy leaderboard that Gibbo made because he's a ledge. Uh, let's see if the Twin Otter will return. That will, super tight. The Twin Otter will be a default aircraft in flight sim 2024. I'm almost certain of it. 3.9 ain't bad for a Carinado. Hey, Bacelli is here. Good to see you, Bacelli. We're just doing a quick restart. We have one flight left, one leg. It's going to be a quick jaunt from uh, Basil Mulhouse down to um, Geneva. Down to Geneva, lads. Ian, good to see you. Do you know what about a Lancaster bomber coming to the sim? Yes, I do. Just two of them in production. The closest one, I think, is going to be from Airplane Heaven. And the only thing holding up Airplane Heaven, they're waiting on the sounds. I would expect to see that... I'd expect to see it springtime. Really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that. Admiral Ted, good to see you. Any word yet when the A380 will be out? They haven't said. Um, They haven't said when they're going to release it. They did give us an update a couple of weeks ago, though. Some new textures and stuff. Someone is developing a Dash 8, 1, 2, or 300. Well, Majestic are doing that, Boston Elf. Uh, Majestic are working on the, uh, the Dash 8. Um, specifically, I think it's the 200, or is it the 400? Uh, what happened to the new A320 Neo, says TJ Turner? They're still working on it. Uh, any builds are still working on that one. Uh, I'm in general. Oh, no, you're in Geneva, says the slick one. Drop in for a pint, put on the kettle. Basil Mould House, sounds like I can eat there. <laughs> 400, thank you, Dougal. Yes, the 400. With Q400. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, has anyone been looking at um, X-Plane since they've updated it? I saw Conti flying a 757 in it. It looked very good. Ashley was on our stream yesterday and we were flying the 737 into Dublin uh, with Stormisha. And I have to say, lads, the sim was just incredible. It was one of those jaw-dropping moments in the flight sim where, you know, the weather is on point, wind, all that stuff, it's on point. It just looked friggin' awesome. And uh, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing great things with X-Plane 12, really am. Right, where were we? So we need to start here in LFSB, isn't it? Yes. In there now, you devil. Now we come into runway 25. So we got ourselves uh, booted in. Let's see what happens. Uh, JP Aviate, good to see you, mate. Welcome in, welcome in. Sunjammer says, I used X-Plane 12 over the weekend. How is it? Is it behaving? I would like to see the Dornier come out. That puppy is blazing fast. Which one, uh, old veteran? Dornier make, made a couple of wagons, didn't they? They have one with a mad looking nose. It's competitor to Beechcraft. I forget the... Is it a 226? Dornier 226? Beautiful. Uh, if I'm honest, Murph, I'm thinking about jumping ship over to X-Plane and giving up. Why'd you say that, Dan? Are you having issues? For me... I think there's a lot of 228, Daz Higgy. Look at that for the memory. 228, brilliant. I think, listen, for me, boat sims have a, a place. Too many uh, miss kicks. Yeah, that could happen. But then again, there's some of the add ons that we have in Microsoft Flight Simulator are absolutely incredible. Absolutely. Plus, you have the scenery, plus, we have this multiplayer experience. We don't have that in X Plane. So uh, it was stable. The seven five and triple seven. Now uh, you do need to set trim very carefully. Triple seven. I was never mad on. I never. You know, like it's it's the who makes that stuff again? What's the name of them? I forget the name of the developer. But uh, Flight Factor. That's the one. Yeah. They, like a lot of these guys, I think, are getting passed out now by some of the Microsoft lads. Like you look at Phoenix. Look at PMDG are doing. Uh, look at Just Flight are doing. You know what I mean? I still think X-Plane has its uses, but I, I wouldn't... I just don't... I don't see me jumping into it kind of full hog. 
but I must give it a blast soon. Defo, defo. Because it is a great simulator, 100%. Last time I was in X-Plane, I flew the lunar landing training module thingy. <laughs> I crashed and burned. It's totally fine though, right? Well, we go back over here now. We'll go flying. Yep. There's a question though for the chat, right? Oh, the 328. Yes. I've considered buying X-Plane 12 so I can start flying the A350. It's not a great 350, JP. It's just not great. And it needs an update. Uh, one thing I will say though, lads, right? Um, we want live weather. Let me know in the chat. Uh, one's in chat if you have X-Plane 12. Would you mind doing that? Just put a one in chat if you have X-Plane 12. Catbat, I haven't. What's it like? Uh, Microsoft Flight Sim is, in my eyes, an Xbox game. Been playing it since it came out and I've always been Microsoft, but it's just lost its spark for me now. You're sick of the update issues and, and you know what? It's just not gripping me anymore. Fair enough, Dan. I mean, look at it. Isn't it great that we have the option? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, that's great. For flight sim enthusiasts, we have our Microsoft Flight Simulator. We have our X-Plane. We have Hello DCS there. there. And if we need it, well, P3D is still there. And they're still updating P3D. Like, they're still developing that, which is, like, nuts. Do you know? HCBJ12, thank you very much for the follow. Cheers, man. Right. Get that count going there. G Slayer, Sun Jarma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Capat says, amazing Murph, just addicted. Oh, really? Oh, Capat, I love that, man. I'm so happy when you find airplanes that you just love because you fall in love with them. Do you know? I love that. Uh, right, okay. Let's bring up our tablet here briefly uh, just to make sure that we should be okay. So turn it on. Yes. Yes. And fuel. They're supposed to be state saving. Where are you going with all your... Do you know what I mean? We go 63%. I'll do. Right. Away with you. Uh, fuel. Right tank. Left tank. Thank you. There's me live weather. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering when that was going to happen. Uh, Microsoft Flight Sim is going to have a big year. Yeah, it is. But I'm honestly also very excited about DCS. It looks great though, doesn't it? Thanks for the heads up regarding the A350. Yeah, no worries. Like, it's not terrible, but it's not It's not all it's made up to be. It needs an update, and there is one coming. Uh, looks like I'm waiting for the Inabills A350. Yes, yes. Uh, Sorry, Murray, we're on the live weather now. Right, lads, let's get this plane into action quickly. So, battery. Lightage. I hope my avionics are working now. Here, prop. Huzzah! Stuff is working. Clear the prop. How do I switch servers for online multiplayer? Uh, you can go into your options to do it, or if you have something like Flow, you can change it from there. Now, let me see. Peter, we're going to need. Stolly, we're going to need. Get your lights on there, Murph. You're going to need them. Okay, autopilot is now in. Flight director's back working. We're going to do a flight plan, and we're flying direct to Lima Sierra Golf. Golf. Lima Sierra Golf. Golf. Enter. Back. In. VLOC. GPS. Thank you. Uh, we can probably go weather here. Now, what I need to do here, lads, is um, some oxygen levels, because we're going to go quite high. So let me see. S altitude, we're going to say 12 over the clouds. Pressurize, it's already on. High pressure, no. Dumps, no. Don't need alt air. Aircon on. Uh, cow flaps, pull to close. Keep it closed. Okay, we're good to go. Are we ready? Parking brake coming off. Bit of power. We'll do a Yui. There's the lads. All right. 
weather radar is working. Even though it's only looking at preset, but that'll do us. Uh, we're on the Southeast Asian server, lads. Come on and join us. It's, it's one little jaunt. It'll take us probably about half an hour-ish. We're good for time. Um, we're going to taxi on out. Everything's working fine. We'll put that down to a bug. Look at Renoir and, uh, and Wombat over there in those 339s, look. Is that the Saudi uh, livery? It's really nice, isn't it? Okay, not just flaps for takeoff. Altitude, we're going to go high here. I want to beat the clouds. So we're going to bring her up to 12,000 feet. Thank you. Got the vacuum system unclogged. I don't know what the story was. All we knew was we had a problem. There was no way to fix it. Which is strange. And like even a repair system wouldn't work. Oh, this weather's going to be gorgeous on takeoff. Look at this, lads. Jesus, that looks very real, doesn't it? I'm not mad about my camera there. Hang on. There we go. Look at that phenom. It's phenomenal looking. That's not a phenom. That's the... That's the uh, CJ4, isn't it? Oh, no, it's a Mustang. So many planes we have now. Jesus, look at this. The weather looks fun. Absolutely. Okay, in behind this vision jet here now. Go ahead, get our heading bug synced to where we need it. It's going to be take off, fly straight out, and then we'll join up on the magenta line. If this was IFR, we'd be getting an IFR clearance. Okay, quick check. So, we are walking. We're talking. Flap set. And we're about to get... Walking, talking, and squawking. Are we ready? Okay, sports fans. There goes the vision jet. Power coming in. Take off power set. Speed live. There's 60. There's 80. 90. Oopsie daisy. Positive ready to climb. Gear up. Tapping our toe brakes. Through the rain. to fly into that weather over there lads over 200 feet flaps in the odd dampener engaged and we'll start drifting into the left hey we got an a10 with us look at that like this ray nice temperatures and pressures all in the green airspeed 110 vertical speed 25 altitude 15 so far so good so far, so good. Or as we call the straight wing citations, flying speed bumps. Uh. Okay, let's get ourselves set up here. We'll jump over to our autopilot. So a bit of trim. We're going to go V-speed. We're going to hold a thousand feet per minute. We're going to go nav mode and we're going to activate the autopilot. There we go. We're going to land the lights in. All right, all right, we're doing well. Got me plane fixed. Turns out you need to put in the fuel, or you need to put fuel in the tanks. Oh no, Muse, I don't believe you. Brilliant. Right, lads, we'll do another count. So if you're still here, if you're on the Xbox, press 1. On the PC, press 2. And if you're still here because your Jesus isn't the Roman stuff only brilliant, all right? Um, <clears throat> you press number um, 3. Yeah, baby! Would you look at that for weather?
Hello, Mark Carter. We are on the Southeast Asian server, my dude. Come on, fly. up in time as we break through the clouds look at the state of this with 29 on the pc and one on console Isn't this pretty? So many people flying along with us tonight, lads. It looks absolutely stunning. The Jorah Mountains.
the tunage. I gotta love the tunage. Right now, have I music over here? Uh, hang on now, I'll find some music. Some new music. Uh, hang on now. something a little bit different now how are we getting on uh let's have a look here so egt is probably a little bit low so let's uh tell these lads back a smidgen rpm back a smidgen and i think we're okay Twelve thousand feet indicated we're doing all right. 20 minutes out. Ground speed 209. You couldn't have planned it any better, lads. Beautiful. So all is uh, all is well in the realm. We have another review coming out uh, on Sunday. So uh, do be sure you check that one out. And every other Sunday. Now, um, Jay's looking at that for the view. So I have, um, what else have we to do? This week now, on Wednesday's show, we're checking out the XF-11. That's an upcoming release by um, Flying Freed. Lord Freed. Them lads. The developer who brought us the uh, Scrappy Monster. The Flying Freed, I think it's called. Anyway, uh, we're going to be checking that one out. We're also going to check out the Challenger 350. Um... Marv, is the Sunday review is going to be just about aircraft or tools and sceneries too? I'm going to start off with, um, I'm going to start off with aircraft, but I will be adding in other stuff later on. There's a ton of aircraft there and like, it's, it's, it's no harm checking out some of the older airplanes because how do they stack up today? Yeah, baby. Yeah. Johnny Arbark, thank you very much indeed. Cheers, man. Jesus, Johnny, that's 36 months. 36 of them. Thank you very much indeed, man. Cheers. Like, there's, there, there might be some aircraft that you haven't picked up yet, and you're thinking, Jesus, I wonder, are they any good? You know? So, uh, yeah. Each and every week, we'll have another one. Super tight. Three years. Three years is shocking. Yeah, it's nuts, isn't it? It's shocking. <laughs> Three years ago, wasn't life terribly simple? There's Boston Elf down there. Man, look at the scenery. The Jordan Mountains look. Isn't this stunning? 
as we head back to uh, Lake Geneva. Look at all the airplanes we have with us, lads. This is incredible looking. Reckless Ray is there. Uh, Lightman, DJing, Rafa, Lead Ballooner, Test Pilot is with us, Soaring AJ, Squawk Torque, Captain Meowingtons. Amazing. That's a pretty sight right there, isn't it? Beautiful. Jesus, Muse, you were lucky. You were lucky there, Muse. Um, yeah, so that's Wednesday. What else am I going to check out? I said I might do something else. I might check out the Twin Navion. Or the Navion Twin. Um, we'll see how things go. Then on Friday night, lads, we have some ATR ops uh, out of Pittsburgh. And we're going to be flying up towards Detroit. I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. The ATR has uh, received an update. I haven't flown it yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, oh, Jesus. Just to see how we get on. Do you know what I mean? Aegitus. I like that. Hey, Joey Bolo. Good to see you. Round window vibage. Joey, great to see you, mate. Joey, are you going to Vegas? Are you going to Vegas, Joey? Tell us all about it. So, next week, lads. Um, well, before we get to next week, the Roman reorganization and, con and consolidation. So, Caesar has beaten Ariovistus. He's beaten the Suebi. So, after the defeat of the Suebi, Caesar focused on fortifying the Roman positions in Gaul. This involved building fortifications, establishing supply lines, and integrating local Gallic tribes into the Roman framework. Caesar established a winter quarters for his legions, a strategic move to maintain a Roman presence and to keep his troops ready. This wasn't just a military decision, but also a clear message that Rome's influence in Gaul was here to stay. As you could have imagined, the inner relief and joy of many Gallic tribes initially threatened by the Helvetii and then the Suebi, well, they rejoiced Caesar's victories. They saw him as some sort of a liberator who had protected them. The relationship between Caesar and the Gallic tribes was complex and nuanced. While they were grateful for his intervention, the alliance was more out of necessity than genuine loyalty. As the immediate threat faded, the Gaul sentiment towards Caesar and his legions began to shift. The prolonged presence of Roman troops and Caesar's intention yeah, to stay yeah. signaled a looming threat to their autonomy and way of life. Cy Cyrus T is here for 20 months. Thank you very much indeed. Great to see you, man. How are you? So Caesar had no ambitions to leave Gaul whatsoever, right? Meanwhile, the crack in Rome was unbelievable. Caesar's victories in Gaul were making him a larger-than-life character. His military successes were celebrated, and his dispatches read in the Senate captivated the Roman populace. Caesar's achievements began to overshadow those of Pompey, who was previously regarded as Rome's greatest general. Not only that, Crassus. So we know the triumvirate, right? You had Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus. Well, Crassus's son, Publius, he fought with Caesar at the battle uh, beating the Suebi. In actual fact, it was Publius's Crassus's troops that actually broke the Suebi lines. But Caesar was this larger than life character. It was just, it was incredible, right? Now, Caesar, his plan was to remain in Gaul. And next week, in the next stage of our series, part five, we're going to witness Caesar's northern campaign against the Belgae, the Belgians. This episode, we explore the complexities of what is now is the new front, the military strategies employed, and the fierce resistance of the Belgae tribes. And as Caesar moves further north, we'll see how his actions in Gaul continue to shape his legacy. The stage is set for more epic battles, strategic manoeuvres, and the unfolding drama of power, ambition, and resistance. That's next week. And if you want to know well, what we're doing next week... Uh, part 5. The Confronting of the Nervii. 
and the Belgians. We're going to be flying from Geneva um, and we're going all the way up to Bibrax in France. We're going to be flying the Shorts 360 by Black Box Simulations. Something very, very different. After that, we have part six. That's the Veneti or the Veneti. That's going to be over at Normandy. And we're going to be flying in the FSR 500. Part 7, when we cross the Rhine, that's going to be in the TBM 850. Part 8, the invasion of Britain. And we're going to be flying in the Pilatus PC-12. Then, part 9 is the showdown with Vercingetorix. There we fly the Douglas DC-6. And then part 10, Alaya Iacta Est. The die is cast. We head back to Rome, flying in the Vision Jet. So we're, we're nearly at the halfway point of this series. Hope you guys are enjoying it. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Mainly Gibbo and probably Muse now at this stage. Because Muse fam informs us Robert Paisley was an English footballer and manager who spent over half his life associated with the Liverpool Football Club in various capacities. Such as serving as the wing half, coach and manager. After retiring from playing, Bill Shankly went on to become the club's manager. As was the case with Joe Fagan, Kenny Daglish and or they also had a prosperous playing career with the team before transitioning into the role of manager <laughs> thank you muse fan right joey bolo says i once fought with caesar the Rome, <laughs> wait the roman the romans didn't like it or didn't see it coming romanese or if i have a good idea of how much work you put into these flights mucho respect thank you very much dougal that i appreciate just to put things into context lads I so far have written... Why wasn't I better in school? I've so far written... Well, typed... 18,658 words... Across 47 pages. That's where my research has gone into this. I love it, because I learn stuff as well. I, I've learned a ton of stuff on this entire expedition. Do you know? Um, and it's a lot of fun. So our next... Two Monday night series are well in the planning. And uh, there's a lot more content coming. I was never good at salad jokes. Always oh, a toss-up. <laughs> to subscribe to Muse Facts, text Lost Will to Live to 81080. Thank you, Hemingbird. <laughs> Brilliant. Those two have industrial earmuffs on. Oh yeah. Um, they say that if you want to learn something, teach it. Very true. 100%. Can't remember the one that I brought, or that I bought while over there in the distillery. Took a trip down the whiskey trail. Oh, nice. Uh, we almost have Roman blood. We've been roaming around the sky for at least three years. There you go. Roaming. <laughs> roaming. Yes, we're roaming. But, um, yeah, I'm still working out. There's, there's, there's another... We're still some weeks away of our next Monday night series. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. It's it, it won't be as long as this. It's not a ten part. We'll probably do it in six parts. And, uh, well, there's a challenge. That could be interesting. And then after that, uh, there's a friggin' massive project. Because Gibbo, uh, just today, kind of rekindled my enthusiasm... Uh, for getting the thing uh, up and running. So, um, yeah, that's on the way as well. Sure, it's very, very easy for me to teach stuff because my name is Murph and I read everything. Ah, oh, Jesus, Keen. He doesn't say much, but when he does... Ooh! I've just been keen. Um, have you watched the Roman Legions on the march of the uh, YouTube? It's fascinating. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure, Kozaki. I'm not sure. Hashtag 12 <laughs> billion 202,000. Jesus. Um, no, look at lads. I, I love I love history. And Roman history, I've, I've, I love Roman history. And my sim has just paused and now we're okay again. Um, I absolutely love it. And I love learning more and more about it. I've been to Rome a good few times and it's just, yes. I could bore the absolute ears off you. Look at the Alps in the distance. Look at the state of the... Hang on. Look at the state of... Ah, Jesus, would you look at the state of that. That is beautiful. Friggin' beautiful. Screenshot to be Jesus. Yes. 
Um, I love Roman history and learning about it. It's cool. Also, Murphy is the law. Murphy's law. Indeed, A45. Good to see you, man. Well, we've touched on stuff over the past. There's another... There's a, there's a load of content this year. There's friggin' lots of content this year. Started January fairly lively. Fairly lively. Do you know? Between the reviews and the streams and the whatnot. Uh, you'll be sick of me. Don't worry. You will get sick of me. Um, but yeah, no, we have... Uh, the Ancient Wonders of the World. That's going to be a, a Monday night series. There's loads of stuff happening this year. Do you know? Right, we're going to start descending now. That is Lake Geneva, friends. Lake Geneva. Hello there. Hello there. Who be this? Thank you for following. Uh, Dilatron, you're very welcome in. Okay, bring us right down here, Murph. Uh, all the way, please. Vertical speed. Nose down. And let's call it 1,500 feet per minute. Uh, and watch for speed as we do this. So dial the power back. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bennett, thank you very much indeed for subscribing to the channel. 13 months. Cheers, man. Thank you very much indeed. It's not that you could board the Absolute Ears office. You have bored the Absolute Ears office. <laughs> hey, Arch NDA, good to see you. Great to see you, mate. How are you? This year is going to be amazing. It really is, man. It's, it's like, this is the year of everything. Brand new flight sim around the corner. It's like, brilliant. Murphy's Law plus Gravity equals the Dynamic Duo. <laughs> I like that. A4S is using... Or sorry, A45 is using DirectX 12 tonight for the first time looking good. Nice. I'm grand relaxing before Thursday gets here. What's Thursday, Arch? Tell me. What are you doing on Thursday? Um. Yeah. Keen, were you here earlier when I spoke about the Zagre Chickens and the Vestal Virgins and the other stuff? This is stuff you need to go back to your teachers. I know me stuff. You tell them. Do you know? That's what you need to do. But, uh, yeah. I will be working, but something may be on the market. Oh. I will be working, but something may be on the marketplace on Thursday. Is that what I think it is? Uh, Murph has shown the Irish are cultured and have good interest in history, showing... It's not all wellies and Guinness. Good man, Sunshammer. Kane says, I wasn't. Looking forward to the paid update for Microsoft Flight Sim. Ha <laughs> test pilot, brilliant. Um, starts with a P and ends in a zero or an O. Oh, zero, zero. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yes. I told my history teacher about the sacred chicken. She didn't believe me. Go back and tell her again. Go back and tell her about the Roman god Janus, the two-faced god. He was the god of doors. The god of doors, Cain. Janus, or Janus, depending on how you, you know. Uh, I've got to cook a continental breakfast for my home ec exam tomorrow. How do you cook a continental breakfast? Zero, if nothing happens to me now on Thursday. Oh, it should be in the marketplace. Nice. Nice. Loving that. The Phenom is so good, isn't it? Huge ain't... No, it's... Oh, no, no, no. I nearly said it, Keen. No, it's not. Large. Janus. No, it's not. The God of Doors. He was at the back of the line when they were landing at... Yes, Squawk, he was. God of Doors. Just eggs and rashers along with cold cereals and pastries. Bring a cross sound with you, Patrick. Tell them you baked it yourself. We're descending here nicely. Geneva is ahead of us. Man, look at the views. Isn't this stunning, lads? It's absolutely stunning. The Phenom is a super aircraft. Super. Um, Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to get that. Hey, Frick Bick is in a MiG-29. Uh... Janus is the god of beginnings, gates, transitions, times, or time, uh, unity, doorways, passages, frames, and endings. There you go. There's a god for everything. Probably one for the little stringy I bits and bananas. There absolutely could be. RF has become a member. Thank you very much indeed. Welcome to the family. I should do that in like a Marlon Brando. Welcome to the family. Kind of thing. Do you know? 
and get some Doritos. Could you imagine me if I was in the Mafia? Jesus, that wouldn't last. Italian Mafia now, you know. Not the Irish Mafia. Uh, because I'm already in that. Uh, I got some great ideas for you when you come uh, to the meeting. Thank you, Viper. Do you have a rough idea on when you plan to arrive at Expo? The Wednesday, I think, Arch. I think I'm in on the Wednesday. <laughs> Keen. Spotted that a mile away, Keen. And they're Wednesday to Monday, I think. Yeah, I'm there Wednesday to Monday. I get in Wednesday afternoon and I bug out Monday morning. What runway do we go? 7 I are Wednesday, Tuesday. Oh, you're Wednesday to Tuesday. Nice. Yes. Scott, when you're getting in there, on, you're getting up there on Thursday. And you're flying up. So let me know what time you're in at and sure... I'll my guy who brings me I'll sure attempt to go around and grab you my god uh, you got me googling Janice Jesus I'm here learning like a mad idiot come on JP that's the way to do it I'm in on Wednesday to Wednesday I arrive at 1400 Jamison I'll meet you at the arrivals I'm in at 1445 I think Vinnie Murphy our man over the west side <laughs> grand Jesus look at the scenery here look this is Gorgeous. There's the airport. Huh. What, um, what way is the wind blowing? Do we make it straight in? We probably do. I'll meet you at the slots and arrivals. Yes, brilliant. I said don't get in till 9.40 at night time, so I'm going to try and get in the afternoon flight. Sunjammer is there Wednesday to Wednesday, arriving 13.55 at BA. Nice. It's the airlines. You get in when, yeah, when they want, that's when you get in. 100%. I'm, uh, who am I with? I'm with United. I'm going via, um, I'm going via, uh, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. It'll be nuts. But for anyone who's going to fly to Mexico, I'll be there. Uh, for anyone who won't be there, uh, well, I'll, I'll, there'll be streams, there'll be content. Don't worry, we'll keep you up to date. I've nothing on the agenda this year. I had a lot on the agenda last year. I've nothing on the agenda this year. But it's early days yet. It's June, like, you know? I'm undecided if I want to drive up or go American to Dallas. How far up the road is it for you, Arch? Like a five hour drive or something, is it? Fort Worth to LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long is that going to take, old veteran? Well, like a three hour flight? Would it be three hours or two hours? Giannis is who January is named for, says Vacuum. Is it? If you went to Atlanta, Chicago, Vegas. Ooh. From Missouri, over 27 hours. What? Jesus. Oh, wait. Yeah, hang on. How far is Chicago from you? It's about five hours up the road, isn't it? A little under three hours if it all goes well. Arch, I'll just get off the plane in Chicago, yeah. sure. We'll rent a wagon. Jesus. I hear you're a racist now, Father. Has just followed the channel. Thanks very much. Chicago's just about six hours. Jesus. Right, y'all dump her off. Because we're circling to, you know, do our thing. Beautiful, lads. Beautiful. The runway's just over there. Take a two drive, yeah. I was like, it's 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 wild expensive. This one, like, whatever about Houston, this one is it's nuts. But like, I was thinking, Jay's wouldn't it be great now. We'll fly to Chicago, rent a wagon, and then drive down to Vegas, and then fly back from Vegas. Like, it's the price of a mortgage. It's like, I priced it was it was fifteen thousand euro to do something like that for three people. Yeah, not gonna happen, lads. When I'm in charge, you know, when I win the lotto, maybe. But until then, no. That sort of price now is just in the silly region. Do you know what I mean? Easy now. Easy now. Lights on. Right. Here we go. 
Runway sort of in sight. This is kind of dodge looking, isn't it? Sir Murphbot is going nuts. Happens quite often, I'm afraid. I can imagine. Houston worked out really cheap. Well, it wasn't cheap, but it was way cheaper, Muse, you know? That's why I love flights and I can go anywhere I want. Yeah. Nice jet escort, matey, absolutely. The lads do a great job, don't they? The younger ones banned me right away. Careful now! As Tommy Tierney used to say, are you racist or having the crack? Right, easy now. That speed is coming right down. It's windy. We used to fly to Chicago, then drive down to Indy. Very long, tiring day. Wow. I can imagine. Watch your speed. This isn't height for landing. Easy now. We're looking good. Joseph Gambino, good to see you, man. Happy Monday to you. Hope you're well. How was work? Did you have a good day? Alrighty. Touchdown zone in sight. Who's in charge? You it's haven't a clue what you're doing. I have a fair idea. Easy now. Alright, hold the nose up. Leave the speed. We want butter, please. Into Geneva. Jesus. Easy. 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 138. Jesus. That'll do. Flaps in. Oh, nice. We have a DC6 with us. Beautiful. Stunning, lads. Stunning. Was that a bar cube? Resistance is futile. We'll go down to Dublin for 540 quid. One stop. Jesus. Pylons! There were pylons! <laughs> Hang on, we'll come back to you now in a second, lads. You look absolutely fantastic. Lined out down the runway now for all to see. Slow it down now, Murphy. Slow it down. Slow it down. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Dumb to Vegas, one stop, 540 quid. Ooh. I was looking at prices there. Um, Mr. Two Tone did me an absolute solid. Uh, that's how I'm going. Because, to be honest, it, it was kind of on the cards, but not, you know, fully. So, uh, yeah. News fan, you made it. Brilliant. Great success. Would you be Yui here now and check out everyone? That was some crack last, wasn't it? Easy, easy. Look at the Vulcan, doesn't it look fantastic? Right lads, you know the drill, right? What needs to happen here now, flash your lights like an absolute, you know, mad thing. And we need better lighting here so we can see everybody. So flash your lights, move the friggin... I'm not using frame gen actually, Joseph, no. No, this is all, uh, it's DLSS. Uh, flash your lights, move your rudders, elevators, flaps, the whole shebang, lads. And uh, well, let's have a gawk at everyone here as we uh, manoeuvre down the runway, shall we? So, waves and kisses and everything into the... Now, oh, yeah, by the way, as many friggin' emotes as you possibly can. Oh, no, your iPhone died. 2015 iPhone? Really? You got that long out of it? A new head. Uh, right, lads. And here they are. They're looking absolutely fantastic there now, lads. Look, they're all lined out. Lights are flashing. That doesn't look odd at all. Hello, Marsha. Hello, Farsha. Look at the state of that.
You need the freeware scenery of uh, of Geneva. Yeah. It's grand. Don't worry about it. It's an optical illusion. It's the pattern on the pants. The pleats. It's the pleats. I am. We'll fix it. We'll zoom out now so we can get your names in. Ah, sure, this is only brilliant. Oh, Jesus, fallen up, brought that gadget with him. Look. Right. Let's do it this way so we can see everyone. Are we watching here now? Flashing lights. They look absolutely fantastic, lads. So many people flying tonight, though, right? A beautiful assortment of aircraft. Incredible. Look at the state of that, though. Isn't it brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> brilliant. Right, lads, that's going to conclude our flight for this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in and for flying along. I love seeing this variety of different air, uh, airplanes. The variety is just stunning. It's stunning. And it's so interesting to see what you guys like taking out on these flights. It's awesome. So thank you all so very, very much indeed. Next week, we continue on with our Gallic Wars um, series, part five, the halfway point. And uh, well, I hope you're finding this series enjoyable or interesting or just a bit of crack, you know. Uh, we're back to you on Wednesday. I was in a bonanza cat bad. Oh, Jesus. Um, we're back to you on Wednesday with the news and we're checking out a couple of aircraft as well as a preview. And then on Friday, we have a group flight in some ATRs. We're going to be flying out of Pittsburgh, heading for Detroit. So um, it should be a lot of fun. So keep your eyes on the normal social medias. There'll be updates happening throughout the week with photos and videos and all sorts of jazz and another review incoming this Sunday. So um, that's the story now, lads. I'm off to lie down and uh, we will call it a day. So to all the raiders who rambled in, thank you very much. To everyone on YouTube, thank you so much for the support, subscribing and um we got, we got all sorts happening there. All the likes and stuff were pressed. Uh, and to all of us here on Twitch, thank you so very much indeed, lads. All the new subscribers and resubscribers are very, very much appreciated. So enjoy the rest of today and tomorrow. And we'll catch you on Wednesday with a halftime show. Until then, take care. Oh, I was just about to score. Give Ireland, you have been beaten 13-2. <sighs> Wait now, did yeah. I score more goals in this game than you did in the last two combined? No, but see the thing For a Warbird, it's one of the finest Warbirds ever released in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Considering you have the excellent work of Flying Iron. This thing, because of the extra features, because of the... Jesus, because of the optimization, because of how well it looks and sounds, even flying this thing gives you an experience you probably haven't got already in the sim when it comes to flying a warbird. It feels heavy.
Fancy pedals. Fancy pedals. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, no, uh -oh. Uh -oh. no, no, no. This is. Listen, listen. It's a hurricane. It's a hurricane. Oh, power off. Bit of, bit of 